well back to the original question so like the mid lanes that are more like situated on playing what's meta like if you got a chance to talk to faker would that a advice you would give him because he used to play weird ass stuff like master e but <laughs> wait, wait a minute so what? it's caps is just that so now he's beat him just once no. he's turned around like all right faker come here son i'll teach you a thing about league of legends right Sh shut up and uh what you want to do in the mid lane, son, is uh, like, listen. Uh, someone get a translator in here. Like, the fuck? okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Tragic <laughs> accident angle. Like tragic accident right. happened. Okay. Hand, Caps injured his hands, and then for some reason he got imported to Korea, and now he's the SKT coach. Is that a direction you would give Faker? <laughs> right. Would Would you tell Faker like pl to play these other champions yeah. and to be more confident? Right, this is going to be episode 57 of Listen Loco. And even though on the last episode, we technically did the episode where it's after the tournament and we review it all, etc. Loco did one of those classic ones where he brings on someone who just lost a massive match. So we can't really go as fucking hard. We don't even analyze the game as much. Just softball, softball, softball. They just hit him out the park. And then he goes, oh, brilliant. It's easy doing the show thing. Travis, when are we going to collab? I do what you do. It's like... So anyway, I stepped into the breach and I was like, I can't let this stand. Rather than just bring on someone who's a friend of Locos, let's actually bring on some real players, shall we? People actually know what the fuck they're doing in this game, Loco. So as usual, you can tell the difference between when Loco books the guests and when I book the guests. Loco will get someone who just lost in you know, like the fucking quarterfinals of the LCS and be like, ah, let's have a great chat. I'll just get probably like, you know, some people might say the best League of Legends player in the entire world, local. So, you know, anytime you want to reply and get fake or something, just, you know, go ahead. Balls in your court, son. So anyway, welcome Caps to the show here. Formerly a fanatic. Not that they want to remember that, but now of G2, MSI champion. Pretty good. So actually, let's start there, Caps, because even though obviously, yes, we want to get to all the MSI stuff. I haven't seen, actually, because during the split, a lot of the focus was on G2 as a team. Can you give us some more insight into the stuff in the off season? Like when you came out, when you first made the move to G2 and you said like, you know, this is just who I am. You know, I like to do kind of like crazy moves sometimes. I like challenges and stuff. Well, what was the thinking in your mind? Why did you want to go to G2? Because, you know, to a lot of people, to even make the final of Worlds is like an unthinkable dream for some Western players. You know, there's some players who've never, obviously none of them had ever been that far before. So why, why leave a team like Fnatic that looked like you could have done so much more there? Uh, well, I mean, I think going into the off season, it was my first off season, like where I was basically, uh, like before I just knew I was going to join Fnatic, right? But but it was my first off season, um, and I wanted to basically look at my options, and I did not really like have any particular idea uh, as to what I wanted, but I was definitely like open minded going into the off season, and I was talking with like a lot of different teams. Uh, I was talking with like, I mean, both NA and EU teams. I uh, didn't really know what I wanted um, and basically just when I heard this G2 lineup I just kind of clicked <laughs> like I just thought this it sounds really interesting uh, I think I think I mean I, I mean obviously I have always had a lot of respect for Perks I think he's like one of the players that was not on my team that I talked with just because he made it very fine internationally and we would like talk together Plus, yeah, that's um, group. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, more, more, more like we just like discuss matchups and stuff, right? But of course. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but sure. And then, other than that, I also knew that because I was talking with a lot of teams, I knew that Miki was like really highly rated by a lot of teams, and sure. I don't want to be like a guy who, I mean, I, I'm not super good at like rating everyone. I don't know exactly who's like the best in other roles. Like, I always find it hard, right? Uh, I know how good I think my teammates are, and other than that, it's it's hard to rate everyone else. But everyone was rating Miki really high, so I had a lot of like respect for him in that sense. And I was basically talking with him about like what he wanted to do, uh, and he was really keen on the G2 lineup. Uh, and other than that, I mean, I thought Yankos was a really good jungle, and while I think he was really underrated during like, I mean, basically all of last year, I think even now he's still really underrated. Um, and then Wanda, I mean, I didn't really have like, I mean, I had, I had fine expectations for Wanda. I thought. He would be good, but I didn't think he would be as good as he actually turned out to be. So that was like a nice surprise for me. Was there By the a way, hmm? since just so we can get this, like since I saw that it was eventually implied, this came out later that like Cloud9 was one of the teams trying to get you because obviously they lost Jensen over to Team Liquid. Was that ever actually something that could have happened? Like, was that would you ever have gone to NA? Was that something you would seriously entertain, or was that just like an offer that's cool but you didn't really think <laughs> about it? I mean, I, like going into the off season, I. Was wanted to be really open-minded. Like I just want to talk with every team, basically. 
Um, but then suddenly it turned out that there was like a lot of teams <laughs> that were changing mid lane in the last off season. So I, I, I was like trying to cut it down. And I mean, at some point I just decided that NA is not something I want to do this uh, next split. So I, I kind of cut off NA like uh, at some point. And then I was like talking with, with basically like, I mean, basically, I mean, I guess it kind of ended up with deciding between like uh, Fnatic and G2 mostly. And then there's like one more EU team that I was like thinking about. But other than that, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, there was, there's definitely a world in which I went NA, but uh, yeah, I, I, just, I just think that the teams in the EU I had would be stronger. Mm. So for 2018 Worlds, like you had a, I was, you had a good performance, and but Perks also had a really good performance as mid. Was there ever a discussion between two of you guys who would play mid? Like even if you guys are playing on the same team, was there a discussion if you would play AD, if he would play mid, or was it from the start that you would be mid, he would be AD carry? Yeah, I mean I think uh, when he like when they when I mean basically when when I started talking with G two and the players and stuff like this and I was talking about perks and like he wanted to reroll suddenly and stuff like this, I was definitely thinking like, wait. Do I want to reroll? Like I was like, maybe, maybe I actually want to reroll, you know. Um, and I was starting to have this idea as well. But uh, I, I think it was kind of just perks from the beginning. Uh, there was definitely times where I thought, wait, like are we doing like some sort of like mix where I'm like gonna play AD as well? Because I, I was like in the office, ah, because you're gonna share it or something. Yeah, I mean, like I also I was also like in, kind of enjoying AD, you know. For example, yeah. at All Stars, I was also playing like the AD at like some of the games, and it was like kind of fun, you know. So I, I was not really sure what to expect, but uh, I think. I mean, I think Perks just wants to reroll to AD, so we just kind of went for that, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, what about this then? Another thing that's interesting is by now, obviously, after MSI and the final of the LEC, everyone's seen some of the really unusual picks and compositions that G2's been willing to run. I mean, obviously, Game 5 against SK Telecom, like that would be unthinkable in the past for a team to do something like that in a Game 5. So one of the things that's been interesting is I noticed whenever Ocelot and Grabs talk about that, they make it very clear that like that was something that in theory was on the table from the beginning. It's like if you guys want to do something or pick something or try something, then they're very open to it. It's not like the coaching stuff, like, you know, we're going to tell you how to play and you do exactly this and here's the champions you play and you get a choice of three of them and you pick which of the three. What, what would you say about that? What is the culture like at uh, G2? And is it different from when you were in Fnatic? I mean, I think, like, the first thing Ocelot said to me was like, I mean, not this first, but like one of the first things he said to me and the team was like, uh, I just want you guys to have fun with the game, basically. And I mean, I thought it was like, I mean, I don't want to say that I thought it was like weird because, I mean, obviously I want to have fun, but I also want to win, right? But it's just like this idea of uh, like kind of like a brotherhood, you know, like everyone on our team has a lot of experience. Everyone on our team like played so many games and been in like so many weird situations that we realized that it's not always the best to just go for the standard way. And we also have a lot of confidence in each other because we've seen each other like obviously uh, Miki has lost to the vein mid himself, right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and other than that, we've all been playing like some sort of weird things and uh, we just have a lot of respect for each other and think that uh, basically we just trust that like I trust for example Wonder will pull out the pike top right and and they make it work and I think what happens in a lot of teams is that sure sometimes people are confident in themselves trying out things but people are not confident in each other's teammates uh, trying out yes. things and you just want your teammate like like if let's, let's say we have the pike right like I, I'm, a lot of people just say like I don't want the pike top on my team I want like a Maokai on my team you know <laughs> and we just have a lot of faith in our teammates that they will just pull it out and actually make it work Mm. So what happens in the case where it goes disastrous? What about like that Vayne Akali match of like what's kind of the aftermath? Uh, I mean, we basically just like kind of laugh it off. I would say uh, we. I mean, we obviously like try to like the, no no one gets like it's not like Wonder suddenly gets mad and we're like saying oh maybe we shouldn't like trust Wonder anymore. It's just like kind of like Shh, this is not like a good matchup. Like I don't really know why we end up in that matchup, and I think everyone kind of agrees. Um, doesn't like maybe I mean maybe like it, might, it depends on the situation like sometimes it just means like oh, okay let's just not play this champion anymore uh, obviously we also had other champs it doesn't have to be like something crazy as vain it could also just be like the Corky or the Vlad or the RC I played which all things didn't really work out and then we just tried to adapt right and make something happen that instead works Sure. So one of the topics coming into MSI was obviously people didn't know whether Mickey would actually be able to play at all or whether he'd be able to practice for the tournament. And, you know, obviously Promiskey was there in case he needed to step in. Like how much actual practice were you able to get with Mickey X in the team? And um, did it mean that, you know, once you got to the tournament, you had to just accept whatever level he was at? Like was, it able to, was he able to get back to good form outside of the game? Um, 
I mean, I, th- I think it starts even from playoffs, right? Because Miki was not screaming in playoffs. He was screaming like one game a day, I think. Uh, and he, like, he was basically screaming like one game a day when he was not playing solo queue. So I think it's something like this, right? And we're playing with Promise Q the rest. And Miki wanted to play on stage. And of course, we like we, we wanted to play with Miki as well. So uh, he got the stage games and he performed well. And then it went into the after, like after uh, LEC, basically. And I was just told uh, that Miki would not play anymore because he had to rest right his hand. Which, I mean, obviously, I, I, I wish him <laughs> to get as, as good as possible. Uh, so Miki just doesn't play. We scrim with uh, Promise Crew when we go to Korea. And then I think Miki started like reading a book. Uh, and then he said that his his like his pain was gone because like he he read All this right. book right. So he read yeah, a he book and then he was ready to play. After that, so man, I don't know what the fuck's he doing. It must have been I mean, a book yeah. by Weldon. Yeah, I mean it, it was yeah. a, it was a pretty good. Yeah, book. he read a book by Weldon called because Weldon's now become like a physical therapist. It's called Pain Doesn't Exist. It's just in your mind. So after he got through chapter one of that, he uh, it was brilliant. Well, Weldon works miracles. That. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Not for CLG, but yeah, for, for other teams. For G2. Um, but, uh, but basically he read the book and I think he was, I, I mean, I don't actually remember if we scrimmed with Miki before MSI. I think we might have, like, I think we scrimmed like one or two days, maybe. I mean, I believe it so. I, I don't think we actually scrimmed in Korea with him. But I think when we arrived in Vietnam, we had like one or two days where he scrimmed. Uh, and also he started playing solo queue. Uh, I think he played like two or three games in Korean solo queue as well, which... I don't know, I think he was saying like he had 100% win rate, so he was okay. bragging to his team. Uh, but basically, this is what we came into MSI with. And obviously, I did not really know what, like, how, how, how to set my expectations, because like joining to 2 I, I didn't know what to think. Then we played really well, and I thought, okay, we're going to like go far. But then suddenly, <laughs> Miki's hand is like a problem. And I mean, Promise Q is good, but obviously, Miki is like a different kind of player. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I just didn't know what to expect. But honestly, it turns out that Miki, even without practice, is like really insane. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Well, here's what we'll do, by the way, just to let everyone know for this episode. Obviously, it's not just going to be like two hours of interview and caps back and forth. So what we'll do is we'll ask some questions first that relate to the tournament, so he can give us his thoughts, and then we'll do just topics where we all give a thought, and then we'll we'll see where it goes from there. So one thing I want to ask you about caps is, right? Normally, when someone's considered the best player. Normally, people expect that, like, think about when Faker was supposed to be the best, or, for example, Rookie coming in this tournament. People have very high standards. Like, they expect you to be the best every game, pretty much. And even if you're not the best, you're supposed to just do okay. You're not allowed to do badly, though. So, can you explain to us, like, why do you seem to have these games where you either just take the game over or you, like, you tactically int? <laughs> why, why, is, why do you have these two alter? Why is there, like, an alter ego to Caps? Yeah, I mean, um, I think, I mean, like, I think it's, I mean, for sure, there's like a lot of truth to it, right? But mm-hmm. I also think it's like something that's like, it's maybe like over focused on. Like, sure. it's kind of like, it's like a meme, right? So when you see me do really well, everyone would say like, oh, it's claps and then uh, the other way craps. Uh, so for sure, there's like a hyper focus on it. I think even when Faker was like really insane, he also had like a lot of games where he was kind of just like, it looked like he ran it down, you know? Mm-hmm. And even if you look at this tournament, I think there's a lot of, games where some people just like kind of ran it down but because it's not like a meme around it then <laughs> people will not like meme about it right mm-hmm. um but and but i mean so to actually just like how the thing came up and how like i actually have so many games where it, it like maybe it, for sure i think i have more than like average right where it looks like kind of in uh i think the same way that uh Jankos gets really underrated i mean i don't want to say i get underrated because i don't think i did do but i think i play really aggressive just like Jankos, and i think i am willing to take like a lot of risks to basically get my team ahead or put myself ahead. Uh, and just sometimes these things don't work out. Uh, and that can be because I fuck up. It can be because someone, someone else does on fucking up on my team. But basically, uh, it ends up looking like I'm just running it down, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it can be like super small things. Um, I think the best example is probably like the that game. Like, I, I don't know if you guys know, but if you guys remember the <laughs> my Asia game against the, no, wait, Vlad game against the, um, was a Koscu Asia back in the day? It was like a oh, where a you died to the like Azir? Me. Yeah, and yeah. then you just insta die. I, I remember that one. Yeah, so basically, I just ran up and he just auto attacked me and I died. And it was something like I think I mean, I, I knew Vlad may e cost health for me, but I didn't know that it was like channeling and like channeling. Uh, I mean, I knew it was channeling, but I didn't know that it was like I was losing health while I was channeling E. So basically, I pressed <laughs> E, I saw how much damage he did, and then I was like. I was gonna let him t- hit me once more and then W mm-hmm. and like heal up and stuff like this and then I think my jungle was ready to gank him as well but instead I just like end up losing health from my E and dying right mm-hmm. and now it looks like the worst play in the world but uh, it's just like a small miscalculation or something I didn't uh, know right 
And it doesn't have to be something I don't know. It can also be someone my team doesn't know or, or whatnot. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's just like a small mistake that suddenly ends up being really bad because I play extremely aggressive and I play like really on the edge, basically. Okay. So it's just something that's gonna we're going to see with you all the time because you play right on the edge. One miscalculation means like it's absolute garbage. And if you calculate everything perfectly, then you're a god tier player. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, for sure, it depends a lot on the the role I have in, in, in the game, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's why when it, I'm playing champions like Silas, I see a... Uh, Yes. Wait. It's not Silas. Not Asia. Silas Akali. When I play like this kind of assassins, where I basically have a lot of, uh, yeah, obviously a lot, a lot of play potential and there's a lot of like, like calculations I can do, then I can get ahead of my opponents. But when I end up, uh, but when I play something like Morgana or Lissandra, which I end up playing in in playoffs, it's not like I'm going for the craziest plays. I'm just kind of like surviving and then like trying to help out my team so that they can do like the crazy plays. See, when you said that, I noticed you've repeatedly kept saying the word is there. Like, have you, are you still not going yeah. over that, mate? What the fuck were you doing in that game? Like, it, who, who did that draft? Was like, was that like a joke or something? What the fuck was that draft? Yeah, right. honestly, honestly, like Asia is just like a curse time for me at this point. I think, I think, I think I, I failed to qualify with Asia like before I joined Challenge, uh, before I joined like uh, Fnatic and all these kind of things. I failed to qualify with Challenge with Asia. Then I lost at Worlds with it, and I lost at MSI now with it. I think it just, it's a cursed champion, honestly. <laughs> sure. Because that's the thing. You, you, he said, you know, he likes challenges. He doesn't like things to be the same. So I can tell, you know, he likes challenges. So what he thought was like, what? We're already 1-1. One, one, so we'll just lose this game three by drafting like Vladimir, Azir, and a fucking Kaiser late game. Because G2 obviously loves to go late game with SK Telecom, right? Was that, what was, you know, in the first and the third game, you guys did these, what looked like you were going for late game comps, basically. Like, what was the thinking on, on that? Like, was there some reason you thought you wanted to play that style? Because everyone's expecting the opposite from G2 coming in this series. Uh, I mean, I think it just kind of happened. I think I think I kind of ended like the draft pass at like game three, uh, because I mean, basically how it happened was like, I was really wanted to play Silas. Uh, I thought like Silas, Akali were like super OP and I really want to play them. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't feel that threatened by Vega or Silas. So I was like down to give it to him, but I didn't think about the, the part where like, I have to have a champion ready for to play against as well. <laughs> so we didn't really have like a champion to play against Silas. And then uh, it just ended up being Asia because we played that a bit. But I at the same time also knew that I didn't really want to play Asia because he didn't really fit the, the meta the tournament had evolved around. Uh, so I think that was just kind of me ending. And maybe if I had went for something else, which uh, was a bit more risky maybe, but I think it would have fit more the game. Wait, so you guys went into the game knowing that you would give him a Silas, but didn't have a pick in mind? <laughs> We'll give him Silas, but he just know. said he did it. To be fair, like yeah, I mean, he honestly, thought. yeah, I, like honestly, how how I think how it went down was like grabs was like, wait, so are we gonna give them Silas? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, just give them Silas. I mean, I'll I'll have something ready, right? <laughs> and then one was like, yeah, I'll also have something ready. And then we go like we go uh, we go draft and we we go on stage and we pick the champs and then suddenly I'm picking champ and I'm like, well, um, what what champ am I playing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am. <laughs> That's one way to do it, certainly. Best of five what, versus SKT, and you guys are underprepared. Holy, what and you do guys you think still of, won. Uh, yeah, what do you think of the fact that you did get to o only in half the games? Clap Faker, finally. Um, I mean, it felt good, right? I mean, I, I, again, I really liked the the obviously that color game. I really liked the, uh, was it the rice game as well? Like, I like these kind of champs. I mean, I also thought the, the Sandro game was fun and all, but I, I really like when I get get to like get in there, you know, and do do some action. <laughs> Was SK Telecom one of the teams? Did you actually get to practice against them at all before you played them? No, I mean they. Oh, you mean in scrims? Yeah, I heard there wasn't much scrimming going on. Yeah, yeah. So it was like I, such I, a I, short amount of time between the tournament, right? Yeah, I mean we didn't scrim SKT at all. I think. Uh, I think. Yeah, I mean I don't I don't know why, right? But uh, it just didn't really work out. I mean we didn't scrim the, any of the teams that much because we we weren't Korea, and well. I mean, honestly, like I don't even know. We didn't really scrim that much, but we just scrimmed like some some lower teams in like Korea, some lower teams in NA. I think a lot of teams were on breaks, mm -hmm. and none of them side teams we could really get scrims with. I think we scrimmed like Teal one day, uh, and then it just happened that we went to MSI. We had like a few days where we just scrimmed some of the uh, the teams at MSI, but we didn't really get to scrim much against. Like, I think we had like one day with IG and no days with uh, SKT, and then maybe like two two days with Teal or something else. But basically, we didn't have like. Uh, I mean, we didn't know all the teams we played against, right? Except for what we saw online. SKT has been historically, like, very, very secretive. Um, the yeah. only teams that really got to scrim them pretty often in the past and pe they were okay with is 
Reaper team, C9, and when I was on TSM, because Reaper and I both know Goma, and unless, like, you have an in with SKT, like, they are very, very, like, walls up, like, we don't really trust anyone that's not Korean. That's been, like, the history of SKT for a long time. Well, since uh, TSM posted uh, videos of, of the scrims, maybe I'll... <laughs> no, no, those accidentally got out, you know, and it's always oh, okay. bizarrely. If you notice, Caps, it's always the ones that the Western team's winning over, like the Korean that gets magically leaked. And I've always wondered that. It's convenient, isn't it? So who can know how those got out? No. Weird. So anyway, I have a question, then. If you hadn't scrimmed any of these teams, what happened between the group stage and the semifinals that made your team think that Sona Tarek was the way to go in game one of this series? That is an interesting draft, certainly. I mean, yeah, again, I think we just uh, kind of went into MSI. We thought Sona Tarek was, I mean, we actually didn't know how strong it was, but then we just saw that uh, every team was banning it against us and every team was banning against NA and we were like, oh, well, I guess it's like Giga OP. Wait, you um, guys should be the best Sona Tarek team. You guys have a maze player playing AD carry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's true, right? Um, but 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 the thing is, we just didn't really. I mean, we just didn't really get. I mean, we just didn't know how strong it was because we didn't get to play it in scrims. Like it was banned most scrims, mm -hmm. and we go on stage and it's banned on stage as well. And then it's like finally not banned, which like I think it's actually the only game where it was open, and we we're like, do we pick it? And then we're like, well, like, I mean, I guess we just pick it, right? Because uh, we were like, I mean, the worst case is just that we go our game down, and best case is like they have to ban it again. So we just went for it. Um, I mean, like, I still think it's strong right now. Uh, I think we just had kind of like a unfortunate early game. Wait, so the both I games like you the lost that game? Yeah. Wait. No, Roko, they actually, they, they genuinely G2. Their, their logic was, if we lose this, we're just 0-1 down after win three out of the next four against Faker and SK Telecom. So no biggie. All right, then. So they lost so two games to SKT and both games. One of them is like, oh, we haven't really practiced Sonoteric. We'll just play Sonoteric. And then the other game is... We'll give him Silas, and I don't have a pick to pick into it, so I'll just pick Azir. So both games are just like unprepped drafts. Like, those are the only two they lost to FKT. That's fucking crazy. You have to realize, I actually think he's got some this. When I did my other show, which hasn't come out yet, with Veteran, my European show, mm -hmm. he even says one of the reasons he thinks he used so strong right now in the current meta is that this meta is actually the most similar to what like EU solo queue is like, where every single player just plays for himself and they're all trying to get super far ahead. And, you know, like, the jungler isn't just going to 24-7 camp one lane. It's like, like, that's the thing is if you, if like the way that they do these drafts, they clearly don't have it all on a board before. Like, they're doing it on the fly. I mean, we, like we we like I don't want to like take anything away. Like we are really prepared coming into this series, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's just that's like some off chance. Like we basically like how how we discuss draft is like uh, I mean people are confident in themselves, and there's a lot of cases where maybe like we can't go you can't go through every case basically. So there's just some cases where uh, you just have to like tr trust each other, right? And then if if sure. let's say they they pick Silas first pick and uh, they ban like all all the counters to it or whatnot, and we still give it and um, and I say like I'm fine with it, then, then I just have to trust that I'm fine with it. I mean, then I wasn't actually fine with it, but uh, it's just we can't actually go for everything draft, and we have to just like actually go through the like the basically the most important cases, mm -hmm. and then um, we just hope that each other like actually don't talk shit. But I guess I mean I, I talk shit, right? But yeah, you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, right, before we get before we before I forget this, just quickly, like, how did you lose twice to Fong Vu Buffalo? <laughs> Are they secret in the OP team and so on? What the fuck's going on there? Because I don't buy that whole angle. Everyone else are like, oh, it didn't even matter, and they already knew they made the plus. Like, that's bullshit. Like, that, no, no top pro thinks that way. Um, yeah, how did we lose to Buffalo? I mean, I think well, I, I, don't, I don't actually remember the first loss, but I believe we just came off like a two zero day and we beat SKT the first day, so we were like pretty. Pretty confident in ourselves, um, and I don't exactly remember what exactly what happened, but I, I, I just believe the first we... one they actually completely wrecked you, if I remember correctly. I think that was the one where they like won pretty heavily, like they were just yeah. But I, I, I believe how I believe it was like, I mean, basically, the game was like kind of just over from like minute three or four. Like they were just like so far ahead, and sure we can maybe like slow down or something, but it was like completely crazy. Like I think they got bot kill, and then they got like mid jungle kill, and then they got like another bot kill or something, and we died like four people in like three minutes, and. Uh, from there, it was just like really hard to play, especially with with the champs we had, because I mean, we were zero fall down, and the, the draft we had didn't uh, like. I mean, I was actually, I think I was playing Aurelia, so it was not like we could just like wave clear and farm for late. Um, but I, I, I'm not really sure like exactly why we went zero fall. You can say I think, I think I mean, sure you can say that. Um, uh, you said that we we were. We were we would not just like disrespect our opponents in that sense, but you also think when you go into like a tournament like this, 
you have to prepare for every team, but you also have to like balance the preparation. Yes. And I think mm -hmm. that day, for example, we were playing IG in Buffalo, and it we like we obviously put a lot of preparation into IG, um, and maybe like we put like well, for sure we put too little into Buffalo, and then we just come into the Buffalo game, and I'm I mean I'm just thinking like oh I'm just gonna like. I had two good titles games for I'm just gonna pick a really and gonna smear from them. And then suddenly we are zero forward four minutes. And then it's like it's not like basketball where you just drop like a, a, a few baskets and then you're like, okay, sure. now we like start try harding. Because mm -hmm. like at that point it's already too late to like uh to like get a plan, you know, because the game is already kinda snowballed. Mm. Well okay. speaking of group stage losses, you guys also dropped the game to TL in the end. And how did that go about? And it was actually Jensen doing a number on you, so I was very shocked by that game. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of the same thing, right? So I, I think basically how it was for us was that we didn't really have, we like, it was, it was, we didn't have to fight for first place uh, because, well, we were basically locked out of first place. You couldn't get and, first place, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And we were fighting for either like second or third, and we felt like I, no, SKT would lose to IG. So we basically had to win one of our games against Buffalo and Team Liquid. Mm -hmm. So we were like pretty confident going into the day. And uh, I mean, I know from, like, I can't speak for anyone, right? But I just know that. Uh, I didn't do as much preparation as I did basically every other game because I just felt like we, I like, I felt it, it would be pointless because we would uh, get one win anyway and we would only need one win anyway, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then obviously it turned out that first game we get like, I mean, like, it was kind of like a weird game, I guess, but we lost to Buffalo and then we get smashed, or like I got smashed, I guess, by Team Liquid and it's... Yeah, I mean, I guess it was good motivation because, like, for SKT, okay, okay, because that's going to sound important. But for SKT game, we were actually like, I, I mean, I felt like I was really prepared. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, now it's going to sound awkward when I had the Asia game set and we had the someone tiring and stuff like this, <laughs> but I still felt really prepared. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just think through, through all the playoffs, I was pretty confident in, like, basically most matchups, and I like, had a really good idea of what my opponent would play. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Before what about this? Or... So, when you were, when you bantered, Jensen on the comms, you were like, haha, back to Lissandro. <laughs> you were back to Lissandro on game five against SK Telecom. What were you doing there? It's really I mean, you just pussied out by your own logic. <laughs> yeah, you needed the safe pick, didn't you? Where you couldn't fuck it in. <laughs> I mean, basically, basically, I mean, it was kind of funny, right? Because, like, when I said the back to Lissandro, sure. it was because Lissandro was obviously like really strong at Wells and he was playing it every game. Of course. But, um, but I didn't actually think it was meta. Like, no one was playing it at the time. Like, I was kind of surprised when it suddenly became meta. And a bit scared, honestly, because we didn't play any Sandra all split. And there we had players like uh, Faker, who obviously was, like, playing so much to Sandra. And we had Rookie, who also was, like, playing a lot of Sandra against me in the past and stuff like this. So I was a bit worried uh, when, when it started popping up. But, yeah. Fair enough. Right, let's talk a bit more generally about the tournament well, then. Before, so, of, of, yeah, go on. Before going to um, the knockout stages, so before TL really got to knock out IG, like they had an incredible finish where they knocked out IG and they got to play in the finals. But before that, like NA got looked at like a shitter region in the group. What was your viewpoint on NA before they knocked out IG? Like, did you look at NA? Did you look at TL as like same thing as last year? Like they're just gonna go four and six and get zero three in semifinals? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think NA is, I think NA was, like, going to the tournament, I kind of felt like it would be something like IG, us, SKT, uh, TL, and obviously I believe that we can win against IG, and obviously I believe any team can, like, beat everyone, but that's also kind of how I left the tournament with the mindset, which is might be, like, kind of, like, it's not how the end tournament ended, but I still believe IG is a really strong team, and I still think that we are, like, the second best, and then I think SKT is also better than TL, and then TL is fourth. And sh <laughs> but uh, I still, I, I mean, I think TL, TL can beat people, right? Mm -hmm. And I, for sure, like it depends a lot on the meta and it depends on how people are on the day. But I still believe that that's somehow what the what the ranking is leaving MSI. Mm -hmm. Right. Wait a second. Wait a second, local. Uh, we're already gonna have to take a digression here. Okay. Because I'm gonna call out you and all of NA right now. Go for it. Because y'all have done this absolute bullshit misdirection where, like, sleight of hand, where every second until Team Liquid either A beat G2 or B went to the semis and beat IG. All of you in NA were like, I don't even think Team Liquid even reps NA, actually. You know, TSM was the best team, and if they'd have gone, or them a Cloud9, they did on way better. Like, Team Liquid, like, they just need to learn and listen to Reggie and, like, not build what? their team this way, you know, and understand how the top thing lane goes and stuff. And, like, you know, like, it's kind of bullshit. They shouldn't even have won that final. It should have been TSM. Then the second Team Liquid beats IG, it's like, NA is back, baby. We did it. All of us in NA, it's like, what the fuck? You just disowned those motherfuckers. You don't get 
any credit for that. You literally hopped off mm. that bandwagon. The bandwagon went away over mm. the horizon. You were like, hey, guys, wait, I don't have a bandwagon left. Okay. Can I get... <laughs> right, you're on the TSM bandwagon, so you're okay. back in NA. You're on shit. So... You and TSM have never accomplished anything. No World's Finals. No MSI Finals. Nothing. CLG, <laughs> Cloud9, Team Liquid. These are the orgs that do things internationally, motherfucker. Okay. I will say, yeah. I didn't think TL would sure. do well at MSI. I 100% would have said, well, I'm not going to go back on that statement. I didn't think they would do well at MSI, but I never but thought they would be bad representatives. I never thought, oh, it should have been TSM that goes. TL won fair and square, so I was never sure. on the train of it should be TSM going. But I was on the train of TL isn't going to do well at MSI, and I was fucking shocked by them beating IG. Come on, you did Loki think TSM would be better though if they No, go. I did not. Stop fucking making shit up. Stop oh, trying to gaslight yeah. me. Well, Stop. You asked that question about 50 times on every fucking episode we did before. Like, what do you think? Would TSM have done better? It's like, you're I, one of those oh my God. Like, why are you thinking that in your brain? If you don't think that, you fuck. <laughs> What, okay. You were simulating someone else's brain. Right, right? Let's... Were you running, you fucking mount someone else's brain hard drive onto your hard drive and then says, is that what you do? Let's you download save, Reddit let's, before we... <laughs> let's save our bickering for later. Let's go back to the MSI with Cap. Let's go back. Let's go to knockout stages. By the way, on what Cap said there, though, I actually want to agree with him on that, which is that that's one of the things that I think is like, I know fans want to, like, listen, it's definitely perfectly fine to do hot takes and a talk shit on Twitter. That's kind of what Twitter's for. And, you know, obviously people are just having fun with whatever team they support. You get to have fun if there's an upset or a big result. But one thing people went way too hard with is trying to make all of these results in the playoffs, like, definitive. So, for example, if Team League could beat IG, IG never could have won the tournament. If G2 won the tournament, they were always going to win the tournament. Like, if you look at this series, I mean, I I hope it doesn't need debating that obviously IG on a different day might have beaten Team Liquid. That's not a crazy statement. But the other one that people miss for me is the G2 one because forget even the whole Game 5 thing. If you go and watch the way Game 4 of that series was playing out, SK Telecom might have won that series 3-1 and been in the final. Like That was a that was a real close series either way for me. Hmm. I mean, okay, so, well, like, let's just talk about the Game 4, right? Okay. Uh, so I don't know exactly, but uh, I believe we were pretty much in the lead until we like threw, but we also got like the Nexus turret or something. And we have like an unwritten rule. And is this the one where you were walking up and all your melee champions were just hitting the turret? Yeah, yeah, this was the game. But basically, we have an unwritten rule in G2, which is basically like if we get like the Inim's Diamond Rise, mm -hmm. we actually just won the game. So like, sure, yeah. you can say like they almost came back and all these kind of things, but we actually had the rule that we won the game. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was actually <laughs> well, not. The rule almost <laughs> fucking got working, didn't it? <laughs> it's cool now, it worked. But it worked, but it worked. Okay. <laughs> For now, sure, sure. <laughs> Yeah. That's that's a, that's a suspect. <laughs> Whatever, we'll take that. We'll just leave it as it is for now. Okay. What, what about? Well, well, I wanted yeah. to ask Caps a little bit more about SKT. What did you think of SKT as a team, like after playing them? Because for me, watching, I thought they have pretty good players, but the things they focus on in the game, in terms wait, of wait a minute, wait a minute, don't downplay it, mate. Hmm? They didn't. They don't have pretty good players. Like <laughs> they have some of the best players in every single role in the entire world. So uh -huh. they. They have, they have amazing players, but their approach to the game is fucking shit. I think they play way too heavily for team fight. I think whenever they get leaves topside, they never snowball it. I think their understanding and how they think the game should be played is really fucking whack. You have to understand, historically, SKT gets better and better. So I actually think when they play in the final of MSI, they'll have adapted to what happened against G2 and they'll finally have that style, uh, you know, fixed, you know, and all the smart guys at Koma and Cloud Templar and all of you homies there in Korea watching on streams, because that's all you've been resigned to now. The greatest coaches and players in the history of Korea are just watching streams going like, mm, I think that these uh, Western teams are doing it wrong. It's like, and then you just get banged out in the semis. So it's like, it's all well and good, isn't it? But anyway, Caps, come on. What do you think on this? Like, SK Telecom, They're, what were your expectations? Should they have played differently, basically? Because they have the players, in theory. They could have played any style, right? Uh, I mean, I was pretty confident going up against SKT, like both in group stage and in like playoffs. Uh, I think SKT is... I mean, obviously, they have really strong players, but I don't think... I mean, I think they just have the same problems that it felt like a lot of the Korean teams had at Worlds, which is like... Uh, when we went up against Chinese teams, even EG, who we won against in, in, in groups, we would basically be on the back foot the whole game because they would be playing so aggressive that we always had to react and... Uh, it was really hard to play like that. But whenever we played against a Korean team, it would just like we, we didn't play against them on stage. We played against them in scrims a lot, and when we played against them, it would just feel like, like it would just feel like we got a win, right? Because against a Chinese team, we had to be like, oh, they're gonna dive us here, they're gonna kill us here, oh, we're gonna get killed, and we can't draft against them and stuff like this. But against Koreans, it just felt like they were not doing anything, mm -hmm. um, and we could just do whatever we wanted to do, which was impossible against China because <laughs> they were doing what they wanted to do first. Uh, and it's the same kind of feeling I had against SKT going into 
both group stage and, and playoffs. We could just execute our plan. And then sure, when we did like the the Swan Tarek or the Asia, and it doesn't work, then we lose <laughs> because our things don't work. Mm -hmm. But sure. if, if our plan works, then it actually works. And that's not how I feel against uh, the Chinese teams because they also have their own plan, it feels like, and their plan is like pretty, pretty harsh. So, yeah. <laughs> well, China and Europe, their plan is win the game, like, let's say to in like 15, 20 minute window. For Korea, it's win the game when it gets to 30 minute, 40 minute window. So Korea never gets to get like execute their game plan and they just lose to the teams that are willing to pressure you early. Like as Cap said, like that are willing to dive you. And I think like it's been a huge phenomenon and I'm fucking shocked that Korea hasn't fixed it after yeah, three international local. losses. If you look at the way the game was played at this tournament, I mean, I would mm -hmm. say Fong Vu Buffalo is the best example because everyone would agree they don't have the best players at the tournament. They don't even have close to the best players. Yet look how many games they even lost. Mm -hmm. They had early leads and they had chances in those games. And actually, yeah, they didn't win them, but that was ridiculous. They were even in position to win. One of the problems Korea had, even at the end of the tournament with SK Telecom, is they still think League of Legends is about building small, safe leads that can't be challenged because you do exactly the right move and then the opponent does like the counter move and you do the correct move and so you get a slight bit like they still were trying to like get the fucking jungler just farmed up at times in some of these games like this is if you look at the way the game is now g2 and ig if they get slightly ahead they just accelerate the whole game mm -hmm. like they don't they don't just say oh it's a small lead you know we'll fall back and keep on that so they push the game the problem is like for korea like their understanding of League of Legends is flawed right now, but the biggest criticism I have to give to and them... And the game's changed, to be yeah. fair, you know, like, to be fair, a lot changed, of course. The biggest criticism I have to give to them is you live right next to LPL, and you can learn from LPL, and you can scrim from LPL. That's one of the easiest ways of getting better, like, scrim teams that are better than you. That's why, like, we value scrims with, like, top-tier teams so much, and either they refuse to scrim LPL teams or they scrim LPL teams and they don't learn anything and they go in the exact same way. I was really disappointed by SKT's approach to MSI. I mean, I also think scrims are different. Uh, I mean, I think that's just like a fact, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't really get the the same... I mean, you just don't get the same kind of games in scrims. And I think even if you play... if you, Even if you're a Korean team playing a Chinese teams, the Korean teams might just play more aggressive in scrims or mm -hmm. the Chinese teams might... The, the way it might not work because they're just like playing too aggressive. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's sure you can say they scrim them a lot so they can just like learn a lot from them. Mm -hmm. But uh, scrims are just different and people are just like testing a lot of things in scrims that that basically means that they, they don't like learn the same kind of things that they, they would uh, actually seeing them on stage. Mm -hmm. And if they believe that their way of playing is just superior to uh, well the LPL's uh, way of playing, because like that's how we fought last year, right? Mm -hmm. Like we were summer split and we were going and we were playing like super slow. Uh, we were basically like usually playing like Sejuani, just like trying to get to level six, and then we can start playing the game. And then we looked at LPL games, and we saw every game was decided level two at crap. Mm -hmm. And we're like, are we playing the League of Legends the right way, or are they? Mm -hmm. And then we're like, well, I guess we'll find out in Worlds, you know. <laughs> and yeah, we found out. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, Korean teams have been finding out for this MSI, for last Worlds, for last MSI, and you can even count Asiana games. There's like four tournaments where they should have been like, oh, we're doing things wrong, but like they're still doing things wrong. So it's, it blows my mind. Dude, I think you could go even further. I think you can add season seven worlds to that one because that's the one where Korea probably should have lost. Like that's the one where obviously Misfits almost beat SKT, RNG almost beat SKT. In the end, people forget this. That Samsung team that won that worlds was the one that got two zeroed by RNG in the group. Like that was the worlds where really Korea should have fallen off. So actually winning that probably fucked them over because it probably made them think we're always going to win. Maybe, maybe. It's just incredibly arrogant from Korea's perspective to not change playstyles sure. and not learn from other regions. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty think I think that Samsung Galaxy back then would still beat RNG if they played against them, just because, like, I, I scrimmed against Samsung Galaxy, right? Mm -hmm. And it was obviously a very different meta, mm -hmm. but it, it was like so unplayable. <laughs> like we would go a full day of scrims and we would just not get a single kill, not get a single turret. Like we would be happy if we got like some CS, you know, like, it was so unplayable to play against them. You just felt, and it felt, like, demoralizing, you know? Because right now, if you get smashed by IG, well, at least they in like, once or something. But mm -hmm. against Samsung Galaxy, they just, it just felt like they were playing perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it felt really demoralizing, honestly. But enough about playing with reckless suggestions. Sorry, <laughs> what? Sorry, sorry, I thought I heard something, never mind. Anyway, so, uh, right. What about this then? So in the other semi-final, obviously that happened before yours, so and it was on a different day. So I'm assuming you just watched the whole thing, right? So what did you think of this? Semi like, did did you actually think that Team Liquid had a chance? Surely you didn't. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I I, I thought IG would win. 
uh, I think going into the series, I thought like, I was like, please, uh, TL, take some games. We can like see more <laughs> gameplay from IG. There we go. Uh, right. there we go. <laughs> and then when we saw game so one, we were like, one, you were like, yeah, exactly. Yes. That's what we want. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of how we were watching the series, um, just like cheering on Teal. Then we realized, like, okay, Teal can actually win this. And then we realized, oh, well, it's not like they can't can win it. It's just like they can't lose it now. <laughs> um, so it, it was like, it was pretty weird, honestly, just because it, well, I mean, first of all, it didn't really like feel bad or good because we had a, <laughs> a match against SKT next day. And we realized that, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um, but at the same time, it felt really weird because like we felt really confident against Team Liquid. Uh, but at the same time, they beat IG, who I mean, I, I don't, I'm not, I was still like, I would, I'm still like confident that we can beat IG, but they're different beasts, right? Um, so it, it felt for sure weird. Mm. Well, one of the things about that series for me is like, people forget it was actually the first game that was the really close one that like both teams were in that like Team Liquid did win but IG of course could have won this game this was like yeah, a back and forth the God tier snare the f- I re- yeah months. agreed that was good I actually think that that was like main the main game in that series because when IG lost that and then they lost game two and those are when they were doing like normal IG type drafts after that is when they just lost their shit and just started doing all these like all their talk types of draft they obviously won game three but it was a different they were on the other side at that point in time because that's another thing people forgot is that like IG always wants to go on the fucking red side or whatever. So mm-hmm. and, and Rookie had to like I mean honestly like it was kind of sad watching the game just because like how much weight Rookie had to pull. And uh, I, I I think I watched the game and I thought okay this this series is over because it's just like no way he does the same thing exactly three game, two games he has more. To do that it's pretty yeah. ridiculous. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's like that. That's one of those series where I feel like if IG had have won that first game, it changed the whole series completely because I think they would have played different. I think Team Liquid would do the same thing anyway. I think Team Liquid just just played their hand as it was. It made sense to me. Yeah, I mean for sure, and I think it's also maybe like the the one downfall about IG is that like maybe they're too aggressive, right? In some some aspects, because mm-hmm. the game was like not that hard to play, right? And it's we I felt like we were kind of in the same situations in like I mean I don't remember which game it was. Maybe it was game one as well, where we have like an inhib down. I think they had it the same, right? And all like two inhibs down or something in like this and. You just have to like be a bit more patient, but I just want to end it on that like one wave, and yeah, well, they ended up losing. So, did you second guess any of your prep versus SKT just because TL beat IG? Like the more team fight oriented team beat the aggressive team, and that's kind of the similar matchup for you guys and SKT. Um, not really, honestly. I I, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, just not really at all. I think uh, we saw the IG series and we felt like. Yeah, I mean, we, we we still felt confident we would we would if like we were in IG shoes and this like the the points in the games we would be able to take down TL and we felt like, uh, well, I mean we we also felt like we we obviously don't play the same kind of way as IG. Sure, we might be playing a more aggressive style and maybe play more similar to IG than uh, than SKT and TL, but we do play a, a different way and we also have very different drafts. And sure, I think. Uh, uh, like maybe you can say like t- the team fight way of, of TL was better in th- that series, but I also think they really outdrafted IG in a lot of the games. Uh, which, which like when you then see us against TL, we completely outdraft them every game. I feel like mm-hmm. so. Uh, I think that's like a huge, huge difference. When you say that you know you guys were confident if you'd have played IG in the final, obviously IG beat you every time they played you in this tournament. And even though we've just had this discussion now, one of the factors as to why I think it would be a very interesting final is the way your team played seemed like IG loved that. That was you're like the ideal opponent for them, mate. They love having all those skirmishes twenty four seven where everyone fucking teleports in. Like if I, you know, like if that was Korea two years ago, they just let one guy die there and pull back. Like there's no fight. And you, your two teams is like right, everyone come into this. Fight here at this point in the game, and no one could predict what's going to happen then. So, wouldn't it have been tough? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Uh, but I think if you also look at the games we played against IG, uh, the game one, we obviously played like the Vlad, and we had the Vayne to Akali. So, I, that game was just half in draft. And I think even if you swapped like around the draft, then I think we would also be doing the same kind of things to them. And then when you went into game two draft, I, I, I it was like, a, I, mean, I don't remember exactly, but the game basically just felt a lot better. And sure, we were taking a lot of fights against them, and some of them we were winning, some of them we were not. But at the end of the day, I think we got like an inhib down. Okay, and okay, actually now now that kind of sucks because we were playing Rise that game and then we had an inhib down. So I guess my rule doesn't work actually. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I got countered, but. Um, <laughs> well, what's important is that it didn't fail before that game in the SKT exactly, series. So exactly. you could still believe it then at least, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but I mean, basically, just uh, it it felt like a lot better. We felt like we could actually have won the game. Every other game against playing against IG was just kind of lost, except for the games we won in groups, right? But but um, but when we actually played them in like best of fives and in a lot of these games, it just it just feels hard from the beginning and it never gets easy. But this game we actually was like fighting back and the same kind of things I would expect from best of five, especially when we get to like try out a lot more things. Mm -hmm. um, we I'm sure we could find something that works. Okay. Right, I've got a question for you because normally there's already two ways players go, right? So either Western players, just because they know fans want to hear some spice, say something like, obviously like double lift is someone who would say like, you know, that fake is trash or something. But he, even when he says it, people know he's like half being an entertainer. You know, they know he doesn't properly believe it, right? So this is a question that normally you could never ask someone, right? So Caps, are you the best player in League of Legends? No, I mean, I don't think so. Why not? Uh, they I mean, people I, better. I, Who's better? Who th would be better in your opinion? Yeah, who's better then? Uh, well, I mean, I think. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't want to like potentially put put players. I mean, I think for one, I think Rook is really strong. Mm -hmm. uh, also, there's like a lot of players I didn't play around against in both the LPL and LCK that like a lot of people are talking about. But I don't necessarily think we are the strongest team. I don't necessarily think I'm the strongest player right now. Wow. Um, I I think we have a lot of things to improve and I think I'm like I'm pretty confident we'll be the best for my worlds and I'm confident that I'll be the best but I think right now we're definitely not there yet and but I mean I, I just have like a, I think I learned so much from this MSI that uh, I don't see how we will not be the best at, at worlds so sure. I'm pretty hyped for that mm. <laughs> it's actually kind of crazy when you think that when you first made that uh, announcement that you were going to G2 obviously the first thing people thought was like will this team even work like there's going to be a role swap to AD you're on a different team you'd only played in the LCS level with Fnatic and if you look at it like winning the LEC final that way and winning the MSI final this way is like almost unthinkable I mean these are ridiculous these weren't even matches these two finals and you won the, the two massive championships so like what did you actually think when you came to G2 like did you know you'd be the champions do you think this has to be the best team I mean so okay so it's actually a pretty funny story because uh, joining team I obviously had the same doubts as everyone else right like how, how are we going to do how's Perks going to do most of all but also just how are we going to do as a team but I, I had faith that we would be good anyway and then we had like one week of boot camp in december basically where we had like average results we were like two and three or three and three most days and it was like kind of just like kind of average team and i was like yeah i mean we're not doing too bad for like a first week but it's still like kind of average <laughs> and then we go in january like we start scrims again and we didn't lose a game like we, we would literally just lose a single game i think for like four weeks of scrims or three weeks of scrims we lost like two or three games and we go on stage and we win every single game as well. And I have the same thoughts, like, how are we going to play on stage? But then we just win every game on stage as well. And win every game in scrim. And I'm like, okay, that's just like, no way we don't win the split. Uh, and that's like when I got my hopes super high. Uh, and obviously, then they got a bit lower as well when Miki's hand like got worse. But I, I, I had super high hopes. And even if we lost like the later weeks, uh, like week nine, we had really bad performance and stuff like this in week eight. Uh, I was really confident that, that like we were just like so fucking good. And... Uh, we were just like purposely like downplaying our performance. I mean, I don't want to say like we were sandbagging, but we all agreed that this we couple, we couple of weeks will not like affect us because we all went down in practice and we all agreed let's not get affected by this performance because we already locked first, basically. Okay. In 2018 with Fnatic, you guys also had a lot of success. Did it kind of feel different? Like, did the feeling of like how good you were going to be feel different from when you guys were like tearing it up as Fnatic and with this G2 roster? Yeah, I mean for sure. I mean, I I think I mean I like I've never like I've I've been on pretty dominant teams with Fnatic, mm -hmm. and it a lot of times felt like we couldn't lose, uh, just because we felt like EU teams could never like close out games, and we would always like have the late game. <laughs> uh, so it felt like we couldn't lose a lot of games, but this felt like something completely different. Like it just felt like enemy team couldn't play the game. Uh, every game was over really fast, and I honestly it just felt like unreal because we were just so much better. And we were trying out the weirdest kind of picks and we were doing the weirdest kind of drafts and stuff like this. But nothing could just stop us, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it was it was really crazy. <laughs> I, I, I can't say much that well, that, honestly. Then after finals, what was your expectations for MSI? Like even before the tournament started, like did you guys like genuinely, genuinely believe like we were going to win? Did you guys think you were the favorites? Like you had a shot at it or no way like we lose this? Uh, I mean, I think I would think we were the favorites again, but I... I Again, we were playing with Promise Q, and I mean, I don't want to give anything away because like he was doing really well, and we were doing good in scrims, and that's why I was thinking like even even when we were playing with Promise Q, I was still confident that we could like compete in MSI. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure that if Miki's hand was just perfect, I would be confident as us like as the 
as basically like the favorites of MSI. Mm-hmm. But because of exactly like all the problems, I I, I was thinking that. Sure, IG is a really strong team, so maybe we're gonna have trouble against them. But other than that, I was I was confident against everyone else. I mean, you played IG before, so like, what were you expecting out of that matchup? Um, I mean, I played IG before, but last time I played IG, we were mm-hmm. basically doing like kind of like TL, where we were uh, just trying to tank tank IG, and um, I mean, back for then, back then it didn't work for us, and uh, I was a lot more confident than just like fighting them head on. Because while that might be what they want to do, it's, I mean, that's what we can always just outplay them in a situation, right? And if we fight, then it feels like it can go either way. But the way I felt back then was just, we were kind of giving everything away and then they would just win without like, they were basically winning without having to like do something, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, well, let's do some more general topics then, Loco. Mm-hmm. Like, let's, let me think, what can we talk about now? Actually, let's talk a bit about the game itself. So, like, what do you actually think of the where the meta is currently at here, Caps, where we have, like, I mean, if you think of some of the changes that made this current tournament possible, you've got things like turret plating, obviously. The scuttle changed. I mean, that's actually changed again now in the patch. Obviously, you had all these picks in top and mid and flexible ones that, you know, we haven't necessarily had for past years. I mean, for example, some of the comps that some of the best teams are running in this tournament, ones where you have no tank. And if you do the Baron, it's actually really risky. So what do you think of this current meta? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, I kind of like it. Uh, I think I like the meta since Worlds. Uh, it's just kind of, I mean, it's just, if you comp- I mean, at least what I can compare it to, right? Because I played competitive for like three years now, and the 2017 meta was just so, so sad, it felt like. Um, and sure, I, I might be biased because I had custom results, I guess, but I just felt like nothing was happening. Uh, and sure, I mean, we were getting wards and stuff, right? But no one was fighting, and you were only fighting, like, basically, it both, how it works was like both teams knew when they could fight, always, kind of. So no one really wants to fight ever. And if you want to fight, it was kind of like a. <laughs> It was kind of like a who has. It, it was never like a fight to the death. It was more like a oh I have bigger balls than you, you know. And then I'm gonna go for the ward. Mm-hmm. Um, but now you just actually brawl all the time, and everyone is fighting. There's fights on every lane, and you can also just play a lot of champions because back then okay. it was like mages only. You can play, maybe put put in a Galio there, but but now you can basically play anything. Like I I I don't think there's anything at least for mid lane. I don't. I feel like you can just pick anything, and if you're actually good at it, then you can make it work. Some would say you were fighting all the time anyway at Season <laughs> Worlds, but okay. But at least the meta fits now, so it's now actually the right move to do. Yeah, there we go. It's not how you secret. believe everyone should be playing. Like, if you can play, like, you should be playing at mid. I know historically, like, you played Vayne mid, you played Camille mid, you've even played Kane. Like, you personally play everything. Do you think that can work for everyone? Or is it just, like, you have the talent and you have the guts, so you make it work? Uh, I mean, it depends a lot on the meta again. And, I mean... I think, right, and then I just said you can play everything. I mean, I think you can play anything, mm-hmm. uh, but, and this is going to be a bit weird, but there's more than just like a meta, right? Because there's also like, kind of like a weekly meta or tournament meta. And uh, going to the, the tournament, I had a completely different read on the meta than when it actually like was going through in the different days. And uh, basically, that's like, well, I mean, uh, as I said, like, that's why I played like this kind of Asia Corgi Vlad. Um, but I, I realized pretty fast that these champs were not going to work, at least not for the MSI. I mean, I still think they're good champs, and I still think they can can work. Um, but basically, from a side, it just didn't really fit. Um, but it's how how were you gonna play? The, like, if G two was gonna overall play generally this playing style, how were you gonna make Vlad mid lane work there? Like, wouldn't that take a long time to get online? Uh, I mean, you can say that, right? But at the same time, you also look at LPL where the shy was playing a lot of that, mm-hmm. and we also played stuff like Corgi in EU, and. I mean, sure of that might need like him. Yes, for sure has a really slow early game, but it's not like our early game has always been that fast. I feel like we are usually taking over the game by like by. I mean, I don't want to say mid game, but like early mid game, basically. Okay. It's well back to the original question. So like the mid lanes that are more like situated on playing what's meta. Like, if you got a chance to talk to Faker, would that an advice you would give him? Because he used to play. Weird ass stuff like Master Yi, but wait, wait a minute. So one. it's Caps is just that so now he's beat him just once no. he's turned around like, Alright, Faker, come here, son. I'll teach you a thing about League of Legends, right? Sh- shut up. And uh what you want to do in the mid lane, son, is uh like, listen, uh someone get a translator in here. Like, the fuck? Okay, let's <laughs> go quick, let's go mate. tragic <laughs> accident angle. Like tragic accident right. happened, okay. hand, caps injured his hands, and then for some reason he got imported to Korea and now he's the SKT coach. Is that a direction you would give Faker? <laughs> right. Would would you tell Faker like to play these other champions and to be more confident. I mean, he's like, I mean, he's like 
probably I mean, he obviously the guy I watched the most of everyone, mm -hmm. and he's always the guy I kind of liked. And I mean, I've been I feel like I've been very similar to him, where he also just kind of plays everything, mm -hmm. and it's. I feel like it just gives you such a big advantage because I remember back in like season seven when I was watching him, he would come in like every week, even if it was like same patch, he would come in with like completely different shampoo and he had mm -hmm. completely different priorities. And sure, the meta might have shifted within like his scrims, but it just made him like so unpredictable and you never knew what you were going to get and that, then you can't prepare for him. While someone like Rookie, I think, I mean, I, I, I would make a case for him being like the best mid in the world right now. He still has a very, very obvious shampoo and you know exactly what you're going to get with him, mm -hmm. uh, which I mean, makes it easy to pre uh, prepare for him but then again i guess he still wins right so uh that's has to, that's a that's a balance to it and you can say like that's why i say you can play anything because he, he just plays the same champs and it make he makes it work um but but i i i, I personally believe that that i want to be like un unpredictable um yeah okay speaking of faker so there's that infamous faker plus you <laughs> moment that everyone knows about the Da, 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 this random stole my ribbon. Like, uh, did you, you had no idea it was Faker when that happened, right? It's all right, he got his revenge. He stole <laughs> Faker's his ear, so <laughs> worked out similarly for him. I, I, yeah, it was like season on. five, right? It was a long uh, time ago, yeah. When they came to Europe five. for Worlds. Yeah, yeah, exactly, it was season five. I mean, back then, it was kind of funny because I was like, I was really bad at Riven back then. Mm -hmm. But then I started playing Riven in season five and I, I started playing as like a joke, right? Mm -hmm. With my friends. And then I started playing a lot more Riven, and suddenly it was like my most played, and I was like a Riven one trick. I mean, I was not a really Riven, Riven one trick, but I was kind of one Riven one trick. And then I got the gay guy on my, my team, and like, spoiler, I knew it was Vega. Like, that's why I was actually writing to him, because I was okay. like, I wanted to get his attention, you know? Like, let's be real, like, if you guys had Vega on your team, or any of your team, you'd probably write to him as well, right? Yeah, notice me, Senpai. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so I was like 15 back then, I, I was playing with Vega, who was like the best in the world by far back then. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, of course, I was writing like, like crazy to him. Okay. It is also worth pointing out, Caps was like, what? Yeah, I think you were like 14 then or something mental, right? Uh, I think I just turned 15 actually back then. <laughs> mm. So, I mean, you got, I'm not sure if you won that solo queue game or not, but did you try to add him after? Uh, I, I have no idea, but I think we lost. I'm pretty sure we lost and I'm pretty sure it went, like, I think I was actually playing against Dade mid as well. No, no, wait, Pawn mid at that game. Mm -hmm. I was playing against Pawn mid at that game as well, I believe. And he was like really murdering me because I was playing Seth and he was playing Viger and I don't think I hit a single Q on him and I was just like I was sitting on team speaking and I knew it was pawn right mm -hmm. and I was just saying like oh these like these Koreans are so insane like what can I what can I do uh, yeah it was pretty sad. I mean when you go to international events I mean you can talk to them in the lobby I mean you'll see them in person sometimes you'll do interview like do you ever talk to any of the Korean players with a translator or just like in basic English? Um, so I, I talked like a bit with uh, with like Peanut and stuff at All Stars. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like a bit more convenient to talk with people there, but at international tournaments, I'm usually just like with my team. Uh, I think the closest I got to talk with like SKT was in the plane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was sitting next to Kokoma and Vega, so that was pretty hype. Uh, but basically, I didn't say anything other than hello. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what you wasted your chance? What yeah. Because the, cool. the thing is, actually, Faker always says he's like learning English, so you could probably yeah. speak to him. Actually, he probably knows a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it was true, right? But we were also playing each other like the day after, so it was like... You know I what? I, could... <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, Koreans have true, the but... nickname for you. They know, like, you're known as, like, Baby Faker. You should have gone up and said, Hi, I'm Baby <laughs> Faker. No, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, Loco. That, he's just there showing you exactly why Riot goes too hard saying, like, everyone on EU West is toxic. They're not toxic. They're just a bunch of young guys trying to prove themselves. Because here's the thing. When he was 14, he was talking to Faker. He was talking mm -hmm. mad shit. But then when he actually meets him in real life, and then, like, he's actually at a level, he's like, Oh, my God, it's <laughs> Hello. Should like, introduce yourself and be like, "You're accurate. the random that stole my ribbon." <laughs> exactly. Faker was honestly, like, "Yeah, now we're on land, bitch." Like, <laughs> and honestly, it was like kind of funny as well because, like, usually uh, when you're in the plane, it was like a long ride, right? So uh, there's like a TV screen, and you like sit and watch movies and stuff like this. But I was like, I didn't put any movies on because I just wanted like show my like uh, show. I was like, no, I don't watch. I don't watch movies. <laughs> I'm just thinking about me. He was just he just opened a notebook and he was just writing all these yeah, like Isaiah exactly. comps out. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, what are you looking at there, Faker? Excuse me. I'm analyzing Faker in the plane. You know. <laughs> yeah. It would be funny if I, I had like I mean I, I I didn't have like um. I mean, obviously, I didn't have internet and stuff, but imagine if I had like downloaded like a VOD on my iPad, and I was like watching Faker play in my on my VOD. That would that would be kind of fun. <laughs> Almost next level. What you do is when he looks over, you've just got all the all the video, YouTube clips loaded up of every time porn was like wrecking him in like season. <laughs> just like, oh, hey, okay, just just practicing. You know, just have a look at some of your best moments. Oh. Pretty legit. Basically, any time you could banter someone like Faker would be amazing. The problem is though, he's also kind of like. I actually feel like it's interesting because 
since he's been on top for so long, you'd think people would want to talk shit to him because he just has such a sick sort of like persona. Like his, so there's something so cool. Like he just exudes like an aura of like being an awesome player that like people don't talk that much shit to him actually. Like they do occasionally as a joke, like Jensen saying they'll clap him, but and the people don't really go that hard at him, I've noticed. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Like I, I, I definitely think some players just have a presence to it, like presence around them. And maybe it's just like something in my head. But I remember as well when I was doing like the opening shot of Worlds at, yeah, last world, I guess. <laughs> uh, I was like walking around with all the like the representatives of the team, so it was like a lot of really good players, right, in the world. And I just remember there was like Uzi, and he had just has like that aura around him where he was like, yeah, okay, you're not going into his aura, you know, he's he exactly. has this like space, you know. Exactly. I mean, everyone knows if you do that, then he like grabs all <laughs> the bunk bed, kicks one of you in the head, like throws the other one. So anyway, all I like to do is stack old memes and pretend like it's relevant content now because I don't know, it was working for everyone else in League of Legends. Uh, no, so anyway, I remember anyway. my interaction with Faker. It was like it was MSI 2015, and we were all in the like the catering room, and then he w- the they were serving tacos, but it's like make your own tacos. So Faker never made his own tacos before. So I got to like go up to him and like help him like, oh yeah, this is how you do it. Like you get the shell here, you put the meat in and then you put the lettuce and then you put the tomatoes in. But like I spoke to him with honorifics cause it was faker, but he's like much younger than me. And after we were done, he's like, thank you. And I was like, oh, no problem. Like I was overly polite. And then after I sat down, like Lost Boy asked me like, why like, were you nervous? I was like, yeah, I was a little bit nervous. Like, holy, like faker has that era. Like it, and Gosh. this was like 2015 faker. This is like, prime faker has never yeah, lost yeah. an international tournament faker this was before like they lost to edg at finals because it was that msi so yes. it was like his peak so yeah faker definitely has like a godly era plus there was that weird moment when he looked at you and this sort of like it looked like a sort of a bat or a bird came out of his eye i think it's called a gias and then he just said <laughs> activate agent local doko and then all of a sudden he went into draft and he blacked out You're like what, what happened what, the game's over what did i draft Jogath! That's not even a, that's not even a viable pick. The I, jokes are just looking at you like I'm gonna ruin every jungler you ever get for me for that till the end of time. We talk about Korea, like we joke about the old days, like but Koreans are so like legendary back then. Now nowadays, like they're so mortal, and like we're talking about like Koreans need to adapt, but like League changed so much in the last three to four years. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, I like to believe that's because I joined Delsius, <laughs> but <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know what happened, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I mean, I, I don't know what happened. I just think that Koreans just always like tried their hardest, maybe. And in EU, we had a lot of teams maybe back in the day who were just like more like chilling in life, you know. And now uh then you have teams like the G2 lineup, obviously Perks, who's like we're trying really hard to to win and and i i think the same about me and a lot of the the teammates i've been around mm-hmm. uh and now we have a team which which i feel is just like so insane uh we basically click in game and we click out game and we're basically everyone's like 100 committed to winning and having a good time with each other right being friends all these kind of things so it's it's like a lot of fun and i'm really happy with all we have if the meta shifted back towards more vision oriented, more team fight oriented, like if the changes didn't happen for some of the solo laners and some of the games, do you think you guys would still be one of the best teams in the world, or do you think it it would be Korea dominating? Um. So I mean, I think we would. Uh. Just because like everyone on our team is like really versatile, and sure, there's like a lot of memes around. A certain. I mean, everyone basically everyone on my team has like memes around their champ pools and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. But I, I think we can basically play everything and. Uh, obviously, Perks has proven that he was a really good mid laner when back, like when back when it was basically that meta around a lot, lot of vision, right? And he basically had his, his really peak. Uh, I mean, uh, not peak. He, he's going about peak this year, right? But <laughs> but he had a really like he had a really good two years with the G2 where, <laughs> where they were putting like awards all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, at the same time, I also learned a lot from Fnatic. So he had all the information from people like Mithy and all these kind of legends, right? And I had the same thing from 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 Reckless and Soas. And we have so many different teams' information on one team that I just don't see, regardless of meta, unless it's like a completely new meta, which and we somehow don't adapt to it. So I mean, that I think that's that's our actual fear. Because as long as it's like a meta in the past, we have so many players who've been on teams with. I mean, basically everyone on our team, like we will. There's so many like legendary players in the past who we have been team with or like have gotten information from that we will know the meta. Uh, so the only problem is if it's a completely new meta and we can't make it work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe it's like a five support meta and we just don't play supports because like we all carries, right? So maybe that would like break us. Mm. Yeah. 
See, the thing is, Loco, in order to actually beat the Koreans, you have to get the last of the Infinity Stones, which is actually, it's not the soul one, it's the spirit <laughs> stone, because you have to have the spirit to believe you can win. But in order to get that, you obviously have to make the ultimate sacrifice. So Caps had to trade mm. all of Fnatic. <laughs> but it, it was worth it, so we won the MSI in the end. Like, you know, I mean, they don't think so, but, you know, mm. I guess they, in the end, they found their new nemesis, didn't they? So they did that, whatever. It was easy, it was just crawl back. <laughs> Dorian, it's just too easy to do. What's it. your thought on it? Do you think if the Meta stayed more similar to season four, season five, that Korea would still hold its dominance, or do you think it would be challenged by LPL and Europe like it has been? Uh, I think it would be a lot more even. I don't know if Korea would be the best, because I always thought, actually, that some of the past years, like some of the factors that held the best Western teams back was actually like mentality. Like, I mean, I mean, Doublelift even had made in that interview I did with him. If he was going against someone in his brain who was the best at the role, like Uzi Eye or Deft or something, in his brain, he sort of did think like, I'm probably I'm supposed to lose this game, which isn't really the way you meant to think, you know. Now, I've always said that that's also, in my opinion, a factor that you don't play them very often. Because in a game like CSGO, if you play the same team who is better than you, but you play them like next month again, and then you're going to play them the month after that, that like level of intimidation it might still be there a little bit, but it's way more reduced here. You. you don't have a whole year to think about it and obsess about what did I do wrong and what should I have done differently and, and watch all them just wrecking everyone. So mm -hmm. I, I think it would be more even now. I think Korea could obviously, like, they obviously could have won this tournament local, like I said. Like, they, they almost beat G2. They could have won this tournament completely if they'd gone to the final. Mm -hmm. But like I can't, so I kind of feel like it's both. Like, I feel like Korea would be a bit better, but I also feel like the West didn't always perform as well as they could have, actually. I think some of them could have done a bit better, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's also like things like, uh, sure, the meta might shift, but people also realize new things, right? Because like, even if you go back to like season four, mm -hmm. like what would actually have happened if someone just like played a mage bot, right? I mean, mm -hmm. yes. AD cards were really, really yeah. broken back then. But then again, mm -hmm. mid lane was also really, really broken. If you put like some of the mid lanes down there, maybe it would just work out for them, you know? And maybe you could like snowball games. Um, so, so there's always things like this that it's hard to look back like hindsight like that. Mm -hmm. um, Plus, no one was trying in season four to do like <laughs> triple teleport with one of those teleports on the AD carry player. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, no one even tried this stuff. So, for all for we sure know, some of that might have worked, right? Might mm -hmm. have, yeah. Why not? It's like TP just like got nerfed so many times, and now people still use the bot lane. So for sure, back then, if you, I mean, for sure, it was just OP on mid and bot, and people just didn't use it. I mean, I, that that's what I at least have to assume. I think. Mm. Yeah, it's because by the way, that is one thing that's interesting. That's actually why. Uh, I kind of agree with other people. I'd rather they didn't do the patch changes so often because sometimes you don't actually find what works in a patch immediately. You find it as the counter to the first thing you find or a counter to that even, you know. So sometimes something already exists in the game, just no one tried it. Because in the example we gave there, the whole reason why no one would have tried teleport bot is because the other people would never try teleport bot. So you'd never be at a disadvantage. You'd all just pick the normal summoners and no one would even think it was, no one would even imagine it was possible. It's not like someone tried it and it just failed terribly. No one even tried stuff like that back then mm -hmm. and people had very different ideas around how to place vision to do early dives and stuff like people just didn't do these things did they i also think people were really bad i mean maybe it's bad maybe it's good right but people have a really fast to like lock bands uh i think back in the day at least it seems like a lot of champs were just lock band i mean i'm thinking from for my season at seven like in the first half there was like three lock bands which sure these champs were op but i'm sure you could have like tested out some things to make that counters work against them and the same thing it was for worlds where Cyra Khan was basically per permabanned the whole uh, tournament except for one game and I think Kalista was not picked like a single time because it was just banned and no one was trying out things and maybe like maybe the streaming champions were just like gig OP but I'm sure if you just tried out like some really wacky kind of comp against like a certain player as well because like it's not like everyone is just like an insane Kalista player and if you play like an insanely wacky comp against a guy who hasn't played any Kalista because it's banned every game mm -hmm. then it's probably gonna work you know mm. But no one tries. <laughs> one thing I wanted to ask you about was your synergy with jungle. So you had incredibly good synergy with Broxa and people viewed it as one of the best like jungle mid duos in the West. And then now you have incredibly good synergy with Junkos. How do you kind of view like working with both? Cause yeah, I'm very curious. Cause you've had so much success with both junglers. So yeah, what's your perspective on it? Um, Well, I mean, honestly, I don't feel like I've had like that good synergy with either Brox or Yankos yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I think next split is like that's why I'm so confident in ourselves for Worlds because I think me and Yankos will be a lot better by Worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, I think I mean I don't know maybe I'm just like bad at, at working with junglers. I think I'm just like bad at asking for help. I think I'm just bad at like uh, telling what I need. 
and I think that's basically what I will be working that's on. That's weird because when I did uh, one of my European shows, I think it was when we had grabs. I think he actually was saying that you had like really good comms and that you were like talking all the time, and like that was like, a, or maybe it was Soazi. I can't remember. One uh, yeah, of someone but, said that you you were great at comms. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, I'm really good at giving help out to people, and I'm really good at like making plans as well and stuff like this. But I'm not necessarily. I'm, I'm just not very like. Good. I don't. I don't want to like. Uh, basically like take resources I don't want to like uh, I don't know I don't want to say what no, I don't want to say right? listening to them yeah exactly I mean I'm good yeah. at, at basically like let's say um, bot lane communicates something I'm good at like calling jungle to go help them or like I'm good at like getting an overview on the map and seeing like oh we should do this and this and this but I'm not good at like saying oh come mid because if, let's say okay let's say the jungle uh, top lane really needs help right because his lane is fucked and he needs to get a push out or something I'm really good at saying like oh jungle go top because I, I can I recognize it but let's say I'm fucked. I, I don't want to like call it out. I'm just gonna be like, well, I'm just gonna like try to outplay it. I don't want to like bother my jungle kind of thing. Um, at least, and I think that's just like something. I I mean, I don't know why I have it. I guess it just comes from playing a lot of solo queue and like having no faith in my jungle. I guess. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> right. I don't know what to say honestly. Uh, I just, I, I, it's just something I have to work on, <laughs> and um, that's why I'm really confident for for our side walls. How like, I can it? sort of get the Yankos one, right? Because obviously you've already played a split with him. You've already technically made two tournaments with him. But the uh, the, the Broxa one's a weird one because you both came in at the same time. You played two years together. Why didn't you have yeah. great synergy after that? I mean, but if you look at the time we played together as well, uh, basically how the first year went was just I was trying to survive mid while uh, we were putting all the resources bought and Reckless was trying to carry, right? And yes. if anything, that just made it worse, right, our synergy, because we were playing even less together. And... Broxa was coming in as a, both me and Broxa was coming in as rookies, and our first rookies years basically Broxa only going bot and Broxa and me playing without jungle, right? So uh, that's like basically how I get used to playing and how Broxa gets used to playing. So coming into next year when we try to like play around a lot around mid, because like obviously so summer we were playing a lot around mid, um, and I mean we were we were getting better at it, but we were re we, only reason we were good at playing around mid for summer, and I think that's where a lot of people get it from, is that. Uh, how can I how can I put it like we had a very like we had a very specific plan, which we were good at. But I mean, in any other scenario, we would not be able to play around mid. And I think Hulu Sang did a lot at playing around mid. Basically, he would sure. just brute force it. <laughs> uh, like it was not about me asking for <laughs> for help. It would not be about it would just be him going in and like doing stuff, you know, because. I saw when he, they re when they released one of the vods from this split, he was shot calling a lot of the like rotations like that. Yeah, I mean, he 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 just, I mean that that's I mean he just. Does a lot of things, you know. He, I mean, he he goes in, and that's why I really like about the the G two lineup is that everyone is willing to just do crazy stuff, and uh, that's I mean again like that comes back to like the Hulu Sang is one of those players, and that's what I think all of my our players on G two is kind of like where a lot of people look at them and say like oh he's really bad at certain periods of time because he's like dying a lot in games, but a lot of it is also just because the team is bad, and then he looks bad because uh, he's getting a lot of deaths because the team is doing bad, right? Oh, by the way, one thing, just for everyone watching, I should have said this at the beginning of the episode, but you have to realize half the reason why I keep cutting Loco off is because I actually can't see his camera, so I actually can't see if he was like, about to talk or anything. Because for, and we won't mention why, but basically <laughs> someone in the call couldn't get Discord to work with a webcam. So anyway, we're on a different program, an unnamed program mm -hmm. that might have a lot of historical problems. And as a result, I, I don't have an image of Loco. I just have to imagine how he might be awkwardly I, sitting you, to one side you, you'll and then cut put off, his knees off anyway. hugging him like he was in the shower and he's some sort of traumatized victim of something like that. I don't know. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I assume he's doing all his usual shit, whipping his hair back and forwards, talking into him, again, talking like he's about... And you two, it looks like between the two of you, I'm trying to get my fucking car insurance and my life insurance. Why have you got all these mics on? Like the thing that the... You know when you call up to get something from, like a helpline. They're like, hello, uh, this is uh, Caps MSI champion. Can I help you? Uh, I'm just going to pass you through to my uh, colleague, Loco Doko. Can I put you on hold for a minute? Hello, mm -hmm. this is TSM customer service. Oh, hello. you've been having problem with the shipping. I'll make sure that's handled. Oh, Thank you very hello. much. Uh, Mr. Soren Bjerg. Yeah, so we haven't got your new delivery of a jungler available yet. Would you like us to ruin him already? Or would you like to do that when it gets there yourself? Okay, you can assemble it yourself. Okay, great. You know, a lot of people have problems with that. So anyway. Anyway, that's enough burning Bjergsen for an episode he's not even relevant to, or even on. Or is there ever enough burning Bjergsen on that one? I haven't decided yet. He'll well, have to come on the show. Oh, one thing I did want to ask, since you mentioned Bjergsen, 
Perks actually recently had a mid lane player list and he rated Bjergsen pretty highly. I noticed he rated other players he played with before highly, like mid uh, men, like whatever. You can call that bias because he played with them before, but he never played with Bjerg. What's your kind of perspective on Bjerg? Uh, well, again, I I think, I mean, I have the same kind of thing I said earlier, right? Which I always rate my teammates the highest. Like I thought basically all my teammates on Fnatic were the best when I played with them. And I think all my teammates on G2 are the best. And I know that <laughs> you'd really like to call that like kind of hypocritical for or something like something that's like everyone, that's no way like every player is the best. But the way I look at this is just like, um, let's say like right now we're the best team on G2. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it would necessarily work the same, even if you put like a better player in on a, a single role. And same way I felt about Fnatic, like we had a very distinct play way of playing. And sure. I don't think if you change like the player, it would change. And, and that way, I just put everyone and that's the best because it's a, sure. it's a team effort, right? No, no. Um, Listen, Caps, I totally get it. I would never say that. You have to understand, I agree with you. I think while you're playing with them, they're all at their best and they all look really <laughs> good. But, you know, people can continue the rest. People can go watch the playoffs if they want to see how that worked out. You know, I'm just going to say, just saying, you know. Yeah, okay. But I mean, just, oh, yeah, then to add on, and, uh, add on uh, what was it, Bjorkson? Uh, again, I don't really know that much about them. The only time I actually played against them was like Riff Rivals at 2017, which was not a really good uh, tournament for you. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> but I mean, I think he's obviously good. But that's I just feel like that maybe I'm biased because like just like I watched a lot of Faga back in the day, I obviously also watched a lot of Bjergsen. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was definitely like one of the. I mean, I think after Faga, it was probably the guy I watched the most of. Mm -hmm. So I obviously have a lot of respect for him. I write with him every now and then. Um, when it comes to his actual level right now, I have no idea, right? Would you banter him? Would you tell him some shit? Would Oof, you play that's him? A good, that's a good question. I mean, you're both Danish, you know, it's yeah, fine. That's both true. in a similar that's position. True. It should be okay, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't know if I would. Because um, I just don't see, like, what I would actually say to him. Because, I mean, I obviously have a lot of respect for him. And I don't think he would, like, ever, like, say anything to me. So mm -hmm. it's not like I can, like, go off of that. And I don't think we really have a history together either. Like, we played the Rift Rivals, but what am I going to say? Like, oh, yeah, you got you got me really good back then, but I'm going to beat you now or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, you should just say something like, Rift Rivals is the only times we are rivals on the Rift. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess, like, I'll, maybe, I'll, maybe... I'll, I'll, I'll hit you okay. up. I'll beat your script right up. Don't sure. worry. Like, I'll, I'll send you through some notes. Like, you'll be in it, you'll get your hit. I'll hit you on the buzzer. All right, yeah. Keep that I, might add, I might ask you about some more right. players then, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Rift Rivals, are you hyped at all for the tournament? Like Perk said, it's not he's not very interested about it. Like Summer Split is going to be so fucking competitive. He wants to focus more on the Summer Split. What's your perspective on Rift Rivals? Yeah, I mean, so it's hard, right? Because I think both last two times it was not really that that good. Uh, I mean, actually, when it was in EU, it was kind of fine because it was just kind of new, mm -hmm. uh, and we got like a wake up call, so we actually learned a lot from it. I felt back then, but in NA, it was just like so bad. I think. The top three teams went right, and we went like one and five the next week mm -hmm. because we, we just came from NA. And uh, the only win one of the three teams got was Splice against us <laughs> because they were actually playing against us. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think Dylan was arriving like on Saturday as well because he like took another day off or something. So he was like arriving as we were playing on stage like in the morning. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just like a complete mess. Uh, and that's why I really like this year where they put another week before the summer uh, split continues. So in that sense, it might be more nice. And I think when Perk says that it's completely useless. He just means that it's maybe annoying because we're we're traveling really far mm -hmm. and we have a very like competitive region, uh, like a competitive season going on, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also think on that one, local. Like I have a take on that. Like first of all, I think the flaw in in Rift Rivals is that there isn't much space in the schedule aside from the two splits, MSI and Worlds. If you end up being the team that goes to all of them, mm -hmm. so if you're the team that goes to all of them, you're already going to make Rift Rivals the least important of all of those. Mm -hmm. And because you've had to go to all the tournaments, it's like back in the day when Soaz complained when they did the first MSI when it was All Stars. Mm -hmm. It's like if we never get a break, so like sooner or later we're not going to take one of these tournaments seriously compared to the others because you have to have you have to have some downtime. And then secondly. Like, I also feel like it's just at the wrong time in the year. Like, if they wanted to do Rift Rivals, I would suggest personally do something like make spring slightly shorter and do Rift Rivals as the first tournament of the year. And mm -hmm. then it's like people go, they test out their new rosters. It's mm -hmm. not the end of the world if you do badly, because obviously it's not like the biggest tournament. But at the same time, it's official games. You know, you get a bit of hype. Mm -hmm. And the but, second yeah. aspect, the other aspect I'd throw in is the other part of the reason I think teams will never say like Rift Rivals counts is because you have to compete with the other teams from your region. So mm -hmm. 
say you really are a sick team and then you think the third team for your region are a bunch of idiots. We well, don't want them deciding that like NA wins over you. Like what the fuck? That doesn't count. Like they're idiots. Like it's, it's way better if it's just teams on their own. Because like I said earlier about the whole the West thing, like, come on, man. Like that's some bullshit. Like no one really gives a, like no one wants to be like, oh yeah, the third team represents me. It's like, I don't think people really get into that as much. If it's just your team, yeah, of course there's a reason you want to win then. It's so worth- I'd also make it just like, uh, that's the other thing I would do, by the way. Mm-hmm. Here's how you make Rift Rivals sick. Same teams, six teams, and you all just play each other. Mm-hmm. There's no, it's no region against each other. You all just play each other. Mm-hmm. So it's Rivals in as much as NA, you, and put the other one, but it's like you all play it, and then you see who's the best out of the six. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a way to make it fun. And it's just worth nothing it's literally worth nothing at during such an important time like summer split if you win summer split you go directly to worlds like summer split means so much and the fact that it's hosted during summer is yeah i agree with you like the timing for it is so fucking whack winner of rift rivals gets but, to I mean, make gets to buff one champion <laughs> yeah now everyone's gonna compete like a motherfucker for that i mean i also think like when you obviously said, fanatic like, will go really hard for that there's the <laughs> yeah, you, whatever you know the joke i'm going on that one but keep yeah. going yeah go on caps I mean, it's just like uh, you were talking about the, if we play all the teams play each other, right? But for example, last year, we played Splice right after. And imagine we're going to like a tournament and we play Splice. Like, are we going to troll against them? Because we play them the next week and then next week actually matters like a lot more. Sure. Uh, so then are we like trolling against them or are we like scaring them by like smurfing on them or like, well, well I mean, I guess there's some mind games to it. So maybe that's fun. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like kind of awkward to play them in like a less serious match than like right before the actual match. But I mean, I guess you could you could give like a skin skin to the to the winner of of uh, of all the Rift Rivals, then maybe it would make make it hyped. <laughs> but then yeah, so here's the thing: awesome. if I actually ran, I, I'd even add all sorts of mad incentives on. Like I'd make one where here's the most gangster one ever: is whoever the MVP of a big tournament like Worlds is, you can either. Are you ready for the real gangster one here, Gaps? Yes, you can choose to add a skin, or you can just remove someone else's skins. You can just go. Actually, you know what? I'm removing your season three skin. And that's one for the game. <laughs> that, like you could be an asshole the way I, I would love that. I think I'd be fucking amazing person. Like, the banter on that would be incredible, wouldn't it? Like, mm. <laughs> I don't think Riot would really be on board with it, but whatever. This yeah. is my dream. It's I my mean, I could imagine Riot not being too happy about making a skin and then getting removed. But actually, I guess it would be legacy then. So yeah, um. exactly. Then all the people who bought it, exactly. You can't mm. buy them. Maybe you've, maybe you've cracked it. Exactly. It's just not on sale <laughs> anymore. Mm. Oh, That's one thing it. I wanted to ask about, kind of G two overall as a team is. You guys always are joking with each other, even when you guys are on stage. It doesn't matter if you're down one, two to SKT. Like in all the G2 comps I've watched, there's never like a really serious moment, or they just don't put it out there. Like, but it's the image of you guys are always joking with each other, and you also talk brotherhood with your teammates. And I think it works so well when you guys are winning everything. Like this iteration of G2 hasn't really lost something important. Like you guys won Spring, you guys won MSI. Are you guys ever afraid of what happens when you guys actually do drop games? Like if you don't do well at Worlds or if you don't do well at Summer, is there ever like, like is there ever a moment where G2 is serious? Is there ever a moment like what does G2 do when you guys actually do struggle with competition? I mean, it's a good question. Uh, I mean, I think Going into the split, I also felt like everything was going perfectly as I said, and uh, we were clicking both outside game and in-game. And I felt thought, I mean, it's just honeymoon phase, like every team has that. Mm-hmm. But then it just continued. But then at the same time, while it continued, like all to, until now basically, we also won all the time. Like we never were in a bad position, like we basically won right from day one. Uh, and while I, I mean, I believe right now that even if we lose, we will be fine. Uh, I have never seen us lose. Like the, the worst situation we've been in was 1-2 against SKT probably. Mm-hmm. Or maybe like the week nine, but like the week nine was kind of troll. So I think one, two against SCT, and at least from my, I can not talk about everyone else, but like how I felt was that I still felt favored when we were one, two down against SCT, just because basically game one and three, like game three, I was like really trolling with the the RC and stuff, mm-hmm. and game one, and game one, I mean our early game was just so tr- trash, and then we had like the Sona Tarek, um, and yeah, I was just confident that if we just played like a standard game, no funny business going around, then. Uh, we would we would we would be the SKT. So I, I I I agree with you that maybe something happens if if we actually get in like a dire situation and and then that's actually like a high chance, right? Because we have one week break before summer or something. Else, so sure. maybe we actually get, don't have this great start and maybe 
we all panic, <laughs> but <laughs> we'll find out in a few weeks. What's interesting as well is on that topic, like when I saw some of the comms from this particular tournament from G2, it also reminded me of something very interesting, which is like whenever teams talk about like, you know, we're going to have to work on our communications or, you know, our team play needs work, etc. I have a theory that comes from Counter-Strike from all my years watching that game, which is that whenever you say that, that actually means that like the team's probably never going to be the best because that means like there's some flaw that even after like weeks and weeks and playing together isn't isn't ideal. Like, it's not even close to the best. Whereas I I've just noticed, and this is why I'm tying it into these comms here. If you watch the comms, even mm. when G2 is doing like some semi-complex dive and everyone has to go, it's not they're not saying very much, believe it or not, Loka. They're not like calling, like you go here, oh, yeah. I'm going to go here. They're just doing it. And that's the thing I've noticed because this happened in Counter-Strike many years ago, about mm. four years ago. They had some majors in Counter-Strike where we actually had comms. You could hear what they were saying. Like you could get the video afterwards. And it was the same thing at the time. The best team was the Swedish team Fnatic. And they had the same thing. In, in game, they looked like they had perfect team player but if you heard the comms they were almost saying nothing it was all just like they just intuitively knew what the other guy was going to do and they, they barely had to comment at all mm. yeah, we'll give us some inside yeah, well, caps what's going on in that when you guys keep you, see, you know these look like complicated dives and like people going in and having these crazy team fights but people aren't really saying the whole lot yeah, I mean, it, for sure, it also depends on the, uh, the team fights. Mm. Uh, I mean, I saw a lot of comments about us not talking a lot, and it was also like a, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it depends a lot on the team fights, and we just kind of like obviously limit the amount of talk we need. And I think we get the information out, with like whether we want to take the fights, we want to get the information out what what kind of spells we want to use and stuff like this. And we already know how we want to fight the fights before we take them. Um, I think if we start fighting and then suddenly we have to like call out like how we fight it and like who we are focusing and stuff like this it it's just like it's 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 so much easier to just prepare it beforehand and i think that's just something we're really good at um and i mean also just to comment on you when you're saying about like teams saying that they have to improve on communication i also think saying like oh we have to improve on communication is just like the most pr thing you can say because because it's basically like every team can improve on communication. Of course, we can also improve on communication. And sure. if you lost, then you probably did something wrong with communication. And while saying you want to improve on communication, basically puts like no pressure on any single player, but yes. just makes it so like it's the whole team that has to improve, you know? So mm. yeah, it's basically just like the, the greatest PR in Cyber. Yes. And I'll probably say it the, the time will lose. So. <laughs> you're also right as well, by the way. That is also, a, if, you know, if you're a fan, notice this, because that's also where the coaches who are really like got a lot of tact and they're very good with PR, when they say like, we need to work on our communication, that often means like one guy just fucked his call up completely and that like, he do, but he doesn't want to call that one guy out. You're right. That's like a clever way to make it. So well, everyone can work on communication, of course you know mm. yeah i mean it's, it's kind of funny because like that's a lot of time how it is right um because at the end of the day let's say uh let's say i mean like you can always say like this right i mean let's say i, I didn't call miss or something you can always say like oh uh but you could have looked at the map better or something <laughs> or you could have asked is any mid missing or something you know like you can always like push it to extreme where no one is ever at fault at communication because the other guy could always just have asked for the information you know mm. indeed yes exactly Oh, so I also heard like a little bit of tidbits about you that you don't have a phone, but I also saw you like, um, what is it? Taking an Instagram photo on one of like the G2 vlogs. Like, do you actually not have a phone? Do you just not take it to a tournament? What's up with like you not having a phone? Well, basically I never used the phone. Like, I mean, I had a phone in, in school and stuff, but I never brought school. I just kind of had like, I mean, it would be like, like out of battery for like three months at the time and stuff because I would just not use it. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I went pro. And, I mean, I mean you can't still charge him. Okay, that's a weird comment. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was just like I, I didn't charge. It's him like he bought it, and then it was like after three months, this is fucking garbage. It doesn't even work anymore. Whatever, just leave that at home. This, this technology is way behind. <laughs> I mean, we basically just didn't need it, right? And then I went pro, and I still didn't feel like I needed it because, well, I mean, I was doing the same thing I was doing when I was in school, right? Go to school sure. and play, and then I was instead of playing. Um, then I went to tournaments, and I basically just didn't bring my phone i mean that was like a bit inconvenient okay. um and for the first two years like basically when i was with fanatic i was not bringing my phone but i mean at some point i realized that it's like really inconvenient and i'm just like kind of like trolling my my management and like everyone else on my team because i don't have this phone so like if if someone writes on skype like oh we have to go gaming room here or something like this i, I can't see it everyone has to like go knock me on my door or if the hostel doesn't have like an alarm <laughs> then i then i just have to be woken up by someone you know so i was like kind of trolling everyone so I just realized that, okay, maybe I should just bring my phone, right? So so now I brought my phone. And then, uh, then I mean, I was also trying out some Instagramming stuff. Um, funny enough, I was trying it out before day five, mm -hmm. uh, like day four or five. 
-hmm. and then we lost every game and I was like well I'm not using Instagram until this tournament's <laughs> over I stopped, stopped using the, the phone again mm. oh. but yeah I mean I'll probably use the phone for now because like it's just it's just convenient right even if uh, I mean both of most of the obvious thing is that you can set alarms. Mm -hmm. I think you can also sure. just like use it in the airport when you have to get through security and stuff, you know. Or you can. Uh... Well, I'll tell you, Caps. The it also connects why... to the internet. Like you get Does? like sure. <laughs> you have inf you, there's infinite yeah. things you can do with your yeah. phone. I mean, loco. Listen, like I know in Caps's case, he's been doing really well with the game, so I'm sure he's fine. But you don't ever need to tell an LEC pro that they can use their phone to get on the internet. Where you know what, there's girls on the internet. I don't know if you're aware of that. And uh, there's programs. They have this thing called DMs or private messages. Like you can get into a lot of trouble doing that. I'm just going to tell you right now, a lot mm. of trouble. You know. Maybe All that's why Caps is, is so good. No phone. I mean, I, I was thinking about doing a joke about a certain player being a two-time LCS champion and also a two. Never mind. You, you, you can see where I was going with that one. Mm. So anyway, the reason why he brought that up though, Caps, is because when we did the episode with Steve from Team Liquid, the owner, the, the reason he brought that up that you didn't have a phone was he actually was saying it as though like that, like you're some like unusual player, like you're super like uh, dedicated to the game and you're not like into the fame side of it and not distractions. Is, is, there, is there any of that true? Uh, I mean, for sure. I think join, like, I mean, basically just my, my youth, right? I, I, have like a I had it like I mean I think it just compared to like a lot of other like I mean just youth in general like everyone is like kind of like on their phone a lot mm -hmm. and even when they go to bed they'll like sit on their phone and stuff like this and I never had like distractions like this because I never had like any interest in like I never started doing it so I never like got addicted to doing it, I think and that's just kind of like an advantage I have um, because I never I never started and the same thing goes for for having a phone I, I never like well I mean now I have one right <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, I never like uh, had it in the past and I was just kind of just playing league not really doing anything else. Uh, sure, if we went out with teams and stuff like this, I would also go out with them. But then again, like, why would I need a phone with going out with my teammates? You know, if anything, it just makes it worse. I always felt like because, like, what's the point of me going out with my teammates and then we just all sit on our phones? Yes. You know? <laughs> like, wow. we might as well just just yes. not go out then. Exactly. Uh, so I, I never had really had a use of the phone mm -hmm. until I started flying and I have and needing like alarms and stuff. Like, who needs alarms? <laughs> sure. So he doesn't want that addiction loco. His only addiction now is questionable uh, all-ins when his team's winning a game and they can't lose. So do you he do still it? does those. He still does. He, like, he lets himself do one of those every uh -huh. three games. He's like, right, it's been two games. I know we're about to win, but can I just dive in for no reason under this tower? Can I do it? Actually, yeah. this is like, this is like kind of like a, my thing, you know. Like I'm, I'm so many games. Okay, this it's worse than scrims, but it's just like. Actually, like this is like the IG special, you know, where the game is won, but you just like go in instead of just like waiting like five seconds. But it's always fun to like end it with a fight, you know, end it with a bang, end yeah. it with a bang. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Who wants to just push in a, a base <laughs> and then let the minions do it? Exactly, that's not fun. Speaking of ending games early, so you guys broke records for the EU LCS final, the fastest best of five in international, and in the comps, like we hear you guys like talk about, oh, we can break the record if we do this and this and this. <laughs> Are you guys ever afraid for a second just because you're trying to break the record? Like you might actually end up losing the game or even losing the series. Like that They're never. Oh, you, you know. oh right, sorry, you meant LEC fans as well. My mistake, sorry, keep going along. <laughs> Anyways, like, is that ever a blip in your mind? Like, we might actually lose this series because we're just trying to end it so quickly. I mean, both times we ended really fast. Uh, I think the context also met us. Mm -hmm. uh, we were like the favorites going to the series. I mean, I'm sure our opponents had like that kind of mi mindset. Like, I mean, maybe not, right? But I feel like we were the favorites going to both series. We were 2-0 up, mm -hmm. and then we are basically stomping them early game. So... I mean, I, I don't know. I don't want to like put words into them, but they're probably like really doomed in the, in their in their heads, right? Mm -hmm. And their game is also doomed if we just play it normal. But then suddenly we just like try to end really fast, and uh, it's not like it's not like I mean, yeah. I mean, I, like in the game, right? Maybe we could have like went for the two five and we died there. But mm -hmm. even then, I think if we died there, we would have to die like two or three more times before the game was even even. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's yeah, it, it's 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 just hard to lose when it's like this. And we just played really fast paced because we know it's hard to lose. Like we can take a lot of like fights because we're so far ahead. Um, and honestly, like if, if they if they somehow manage to just like beat us when we're this far ahead and they're zero two down, then we'll just <laughs> try the next game. <laughs> oh, and by the way, we have to say local mm. mad props to Wonder for what is inadvertently oh. now the best banter of the year, which is obviously yeah. he did do that. And now he was obviously doing that just as a joke. Like, are you ready for the fastest final ever? And it was. That's fucking sick. That's like some shot of a movie or something. Yeah, it's the yeah. It's call up before like before a baseball hit where you like what is it? You call it out that you're gonna hit a home run and then you actually fucking do it. 
It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, honestly, he was. I think he was asking as well, like, should I post a tweet? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't do that. Um, let's like a bit, maybe a bit sure. BM or something. But then, yeah, I mean, he went for it, right? So, yeah, it worked. It did work. Wait, if you don't have a phone and you're so invested into the game, what do you do during your off time? Like right after you win MSI, like or when you have breaks, like then what do you do? Uh, well, I mean, Harry. Again, I have like I have a phone now, right? I mean, mm. in the past, you mean like at, at at the studio? No, like in general, like you're not playing League of Legends. Yeah, what you're do you do break. when you're not doing your job? Uh, well. When I'm not doing, um, well, I mean, do wait, wait, wait. Okay, so do we mean like in EULCS or do we mean like in life? Anytime, yeah, free time, yeah, free time. Because free time. Time. basically, I mean, at my, at my, when I'm at the, uh, in Berlin, I'm basically playing League all day. And if I'm not playing League, then I'm, I'm either like showering or <laughs> eating or going out <laughs> with my team, right? And, uh... Or going out with my team, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, because like I, I, some, I, I'm doing something with like a teammates of, of mine. So, so in that sense, like I, I don't actually need the phone. Uh, in any of those like circumstances, and then when you go into national tournaments, there's a lot more oinking because, well, you're traveling a lot and stuff like this. So for sure, then that's I mean that's why I realized that, I mean I can to bring the phone even, even if it's not like to just like, uh, I mean even if it's just to like go on, uh, go on like either I mean there's a lot of websites you can use right to, <laughs> to to basically like get information on your opponents or, or on the meta right. So there's there's stuff like this so I can like write down my thoughts instead of just having my thoughts of like either drafts or of my opponent I can ha write them down mm -hmm. and that also helped me a lot I think this tournament because I could just write it down and keep looking at it instead of just like thinking oh this is really good and then the next day I forgot it <laughs> and then it's like wait I actually I remember one draft in particular where I was like I was playing in something really weird uh, it was against Misfits I think when they picked Anivia mm -hmm. and I remember they basically picked Anivia and I was like told my team like oh wait I played I played against Anivia like three days ago and I really smurfed on him but I don't remember what I played and then <laughs> and then I was like trying to like Rem uh, rem remember what? <laughs> remember what I picked that other day, and I was like thinking in the draft. I was still like, please, what did I play that other day? And I finally realized it, and it was like Aerie or something. But then, then my team didn't want me to play right. so yeah, okay. well, I didn't play Aerie. <laughs> but yeah. See, the only way he could make it there, local, even more baller, like his persona, that like he's just so dedicated to the game, is if you, because you know, at first it sounded like he was struggling to understand mm. the concept of like what you do outside of playing league and like eating and bathing yourself he's and like, sleeping. Yeah, I'm he was showering like, when I'm not playing league. I'm like, you mean <laughs> when I, you mean when I'm not literally in the game yeah. like you mean when i'm in the lobby it's like no no what do you do outside the computer so I, the only way he could have made it better is if he was like well i mean i do play that game called arena of valor on my phone which is just <laughs> league but like <laughs> that would be the best way you know just for some downtime to just take a break because you know i've got to get away from league sometimes mm. yeah i'll wait for the new league game <laughs> exactly well. yeah they're, they're supposedly making one aren't they yeah mm. it's gonna be the same shit i heard i your... can only imagine how bad that's gonna be <laughs> i heard your brother was a pro player or like a semi-pro player in dota were you good in dota at all um, no, I mean, I, I played a lot of Walker 3, but back, I mean, remember back then I was like, I mean, I started when I was like five, right? And I played until mm -hmm. so I was like, maybe like 10 or 11. Then I started playing League, uh, something like this. But, but I mean, I was not, I was like, I didn't even like Dota, honestly. It was like my, the worst map I liked. I mean, I didn't like normal Walker either. I was just playing like, I don't know, Vampire Speed, Footman, just like <laughs> Foot all kind of random, <laughs> all kind of random maps. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I was not a big fan of Dota, honestly, but my brother was, and uh, he was pro. I mean, he played with C9 as well. I mean, I think that's what like was, the only. What was his alias? Uh, right. <laughs> so oh, yeah, he, okay. he likes when I picked up. <laughs> but um, but yeah, he he definitely uh, yeah he definitely played for quite some teams. Mm. Oh, and by the way, he also got the wrist injury actually. So and he got it around my age. So yeah, I'm I'm a bit scared maybe. <laughs> mm. Do you okay. talk to him at all? Does he have your give you guidance on like being a pro player? Like, what's your relationship? Yeah, I mean, I think my relationship is like really close with my family. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I have a really big family as well. And uh, well, basically, we, before I went pro, uh, I was obviously with my family a lot more. And we would of very often do like family events, both with like just my siblings or with my cousins and stuff like this. And I would very often just be with my brother because we have very similar interests. And we would basically just be talking about, well, League Dota, basically all, all, all the time, right? So mm -hmm. I talked a lot with him. Uh, had heard his thoughts about being a pro gamer and just like what the Dota meta is because it's like so different than League mm -hmm. and I'm also like in a way trying to impl uh, implement like some of the, <laughs> the ideas from well, Dota. Well it's interesting maybe. you say that though Caps because that's the, that was always the biggest difference between Dota 2 and League of Legends is in that in Dota 2 famously when they have like the international like almost every hero in the game gets played eventually especially mm -hmm. because you can play them in so many different lanes right you can you can play stuff support that's a carry like it's a very very versatile game and to be honest 
I would have said in the past, if you looked at League, like, oh, it's a totally different game, you know, it's very limited. But actually, now it's not. Like, it's get, there's a lot of bleed over now, it feels like. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think, and that's and that's also why I mean, like, um, I'm not sure if the meta necessarily changed it. But I, I guess it might also have, right? Because... Uh, I think some of it's mentality, though, because here's the thing. I know that in Dota, it's not that they always think that the hero is the strongest for that role. It's that people have the logic the other way around. It's like, oh, no, that's one of the heroes I play. And so it's in this role, you know, even if it's not the best hero now, I can play it in this certain way in a lane. So it's like, that is not, not that it's dissimilar to how G2 does the picks now, right? Sometimes you took some of that doesn't, in theory, look like the best, but your player can play it or he thinks he's confident in that matchup. Or enemy is, like, uncomfortable in it. I mean, yeah. I agree for sure, right? Or it just the meta fits it, but like I, I also the only way thing I can see differently, just like a lot of my brother talked about a lot, and the way kind of the, actually the difference we had back and then with League and Dota was that in Dota it felt like you couldn't do these like 100% plays which you could back in League because it was just all about putting the wards right, and maybe then when you actually can just put the wards and everything's like 100%, maybe it's just like the better champ wins, right? Mm-hmm. But nowadays when nothing's like 100%, it's all about like getting your opponent uncomfortable so that you can like win 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 the mental game maybe so like he will be afraid of you or you will do something he doesn't expect because he won't see it coming but if he just sees it coming then maybe your surprise won't actually work um because i know like smokes is, is a big thing i believe in in dota and it's that's i mean i think that's as like i don't want to say coin flip but that's just like no no 100 play as it gets because you just like don't see your whole enemy team right so yeah. indeed yeah. Anything left, local? I feel like we've done quite a long uh, yeah, I mean, session. I um, I don't have anything. Do you have anything? Nah. Do you want to just give any final message for everyone, Caps? Anything you want to say at the end? You survived. It wasn't that bad, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was. It was nice to uh, talk with you guys. I mean, I'm, I sure. also like. I like these kind of things because I like to get my thoughts out. I think. Sure. Uh, I'm not really that good at communicating with with fans about my thoughts. Uh, that's why I was like trying to do some Instagram, right, with a lot of fans, and I'm trying to give like more insight on like basically my thoughts and like how it is to be like a league league pro player uh and i mean i'm just want to thank you guys for supporting me all the fans you guys have been great uh and we are just going to be the best at worlds and i didn't think we were the best at msi so it's going to be crazy <laughs> all right all right strong words well done that cheers <laughs>